When last we left our adventurers, they met the enigmatic tavern mistress, Emilda Thane, the de facto leader of the small, permanently locked in winter village that they were part of. She told them of the glories of the goddess Matron Lacrimora, of the threefold path, and the religion that keeps them all safe. She brought them to the tavern in the center of town through way of underground tunnels where they sensed something, something wrong below the town. But no one would tell them what it was, except for a foreboding sense of dread. They rested in the tavern, and as they made their way down to the citadel, where they would meet with the goddess, they were set upon by what appeared to be corpses until they began begging for help. The party was able to dispatch these corpses, but to what end? Party, you have just finished a very, very severe fight that you were successful in. So please tell me, how are we doing? Zir uh, looks bad again. <laughs> Considerably bad. <laughs> She will probably um, triumphantly slump to the ground. I'm fine. I, I bad as in need need a band aid or two. <laughs> probs. Yeah, okay. you you see her. You see her kind of. Um, she she always hides it when she can. She's doing a poor job of it. It's tough because we're in a very bright, snowy-looking area. So there's not really shadows to like obscure the blood in, but like she's pretty heavily bleeding and she's leaning on the tree nearby. I will. I will do a thing. Ooh. I will. I'll give you a thing. Wow. Let's see. Ooh, I don't want to. I want to give you that thing. I'll give you. I can't do much. <laughs> You're good. I'll go over and I think like as I as I make my way to you sort of surveying uh everybody's standings after that battle, uh I'm like I'm I'm like uncharacteristically jittery, I would say. Like not not smiling, but there's there's this like there's a bit of a crazy glint in my eye. Like like what happened was, was, was I'm 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 giving off some some weird some 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 weirdly excited energy, but I like I just lean down on you. I'm gonna let's go ahead and do I don't wanna okay. Let's give you You're looking bad, bad? Yeah. All right. Maybe a whittle. Right. Maybe a whittle bad bad. Okay. I will do we'll give you a third level cure wound. Ooh. How fancy. Cause I'm just like and I think that is like even in character too. He's like really feeling himself at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're like coming to heal Zir and Zir's like, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? What? Uh, that's That'll be that'll be an extra sixteen. For oh, me. nice! Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll she looks that. she looks better. I'll mark that off. And yeah, I think I just say like, um, no fallen friends today. <laughs> we did uh, it. We're yeah, alive. Th thanks. <laughs> I think of 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 course yeah and you see me like you see me like realize that what I said was just like a little too like like vague and prophetic and I'm yeah. just like no I, you're welcome of course like yeah yeah are are you okay yeah better um, now I went and a I'll, lot better than last time I'll like offer I'm gonna offer like a a forearm to like help help you like stabilize. Yeah, like, I'll take like it. Like draped in draped in cloth, but yeah. I will take it. Thanks. Yeah. 
Is everyone else okay? Clovis is just kind of like essential as soon as combat stopped and he realized everything was fine, just sort of lawn chaired onto the ground. <laughs> um and it's just doing that really like sprawled out, like sort of sit lean. And it's just like, oh, I feel exhausted, but not in a painful way. Did we, that, we did good, right? We're not dead. Very good. Fair enough, I suppose. Very good. We were lucky. I'm going to whisper to uh, Mary. Uh, you're quite hurt. Do you want to um, decorporealize and recover? Uh, keep in mind that Mary only has 12 hit points left out of almost 60. Uh, Mary kind of Nothing else comes. We are needed. Get them up. Move fast. Uh, with that, I will turn around. We need to move fast. Something else is on its way. What? Huh? I shouldn't stay out in the open long. Come on. I'm going to help, uh, help close us up. And at the uh, kind of the edge of everyone's hearing, you do hear something running on the snow and mm -hmm. underneath it. There's Man, this place growl. sucks. Yeah, I have a feeling that this is just what we're always going to be dealing with and that, yeah, that sucks. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Let's move. And I will, as I'm walking, load in a silver uh, bolt in my crossbow. Nice. Okay. All right. Um, as you make your way down, um, I'm not going to shift the map just yet because this is actually a good spot. Uh, move yourselves down about 30 feet on the map. Hey. Um, and as you guys move down, um, moving a little bit slow, the, the spiritual weapon is still up, by the way, Queenan. Um, so you do still have that. It is great. Um, so that's just that's just as a reminder um, that Thank you can you. use that. Um, I am. Oh, there it is. Running out of the woods, you see what I can only describe as a horrible horse-sized amalgamation of a person and Whoa. a dog. It is not like the half werewolves that you saw before. This looks like something that has shifted more to the wolf side. And oh. it bursts out of the woods and goes. <laughs> and I need everyone to roll initiative, please. Oh, oh, Jesus oh no. Christ. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. <laughs> not good. This is terrible. Listen, I, I have. I'm about to use up all my bolts. <laughs> but God, luckily I... for you, this time it is only one. It seems oh, yeah. to be feeling by so itself. Lucky. I've got some. I've got some spell slots. That's for sure. Digital <laughs> dice. I gave you a chance, <laughs> <laughs> and you're gone. You're done already. Mm -hmm. Same. Same. I am wonders. fairly satisfied with my role. I'm. 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 I'm never. Uh, yeah. I'm okay. Oh, is a two. Seven, I am two, statistically seven, above two, average. Two, yeah, that's all I can say. So I can take alerts. I want the alert feeds. Although the way I'm rolling, it's not helping much. Uh, yeah, I was about to say I have alert, and I rolled okay. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled dice. <laughs> I always need to think. So I'm I'm good. Also, guys, don't forget when you're rolling initiative to click on your token. Just yes. going forward. Oh, yeah. No worries. It's okay. Um, well, uh, top of the lineup will be this creature. Um, so it is going to take its turn. Uh, it sniffs the air. And then um Bosric, it's actually going to run to you. Since you are the closest one to it. 
and it is going to make two attacks. It rears up and kind of slashes at you with one of its hands, and then it also tries to come down and bite at you. The first will be the claw attack. Uh, that will be a dirty 20. Absolutely filthy 20. We'll definitely hit. Uh, for 16 slashing damage. Okay, so that's my 5 temp hit points gone. And now it will try to bite you. Uh, and it will fail to bite you with a natural 1. Ooh. Uh, you, uh, as it goes to bite you, uh, you just kind of, you're reeling back and the, the bite misses you by inches. Uh, so that will bring us to Zir. Because I think your dexterity is probably higher than Clovis's. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Um, I shall move in and strike because he came right up on us. So I'm going to go right up on him. So 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm here. All right. I will use my Uda Beater. And I will strike at this man. And since we are flanking, I have sneak attack. You do. Yay. Yippee. That's a nat one. Uh, that will be a miss. Great. <laughs> We're both just With like advantage? flailing around each other like, ah! <laughs> she doesn't have an advantage. She's not flanking it fully. Okay. Nope. I, I'm, okay. I'm it's just the, the five foot So square. just enough to give her, just enough yeah. to give her the sneak. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, see what I can do about that. That's okay. Any bonus actions? Um, I'm still relatively hurt, so me thinks I'm going to disengage. <laughs> He thinks and, that's a great idea. And get, get away, because that okay. man just did about the amount of hit points I have. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so I will disengage as my bonus action. And go, I'm going to run behind Clovis, because I've learned he's the turtle man. And that's the person I want to be behind. <laughs> All right. So that will bring us to Clovis. All right. Um... How how does Bosric look generally uh, after taking that hit? On a scale of 1 to 47, 31. Ha! <laughs> okay. Um, he was relatively unhurt in the Sporeborn fight. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Um, uh, Clovis, I think, is going to move up uh, into touching range of Bosric, but very much away from this mm-hmm. thing. Uh, is so going to you know it might have reach. <laughs> true, true. Um, put a hand on Bosric's shoulder and say, "Hey, remember the whole thing I said about being the shield? I'm not going to do that. You're going to do it, uh, and I'm going <laughs> to cast Warding Bond on you." Which does? Oh, sorry. Um, assuming you are willing, we have a mystic connection between us. Uh, as long as we're within 60 feet of each other, you have a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws and resistance to all damage. That's However, a, I, I like whatever, damage, whatever damage you take, I also take. So, so how does this bond manifest, Clovis? Um, hmm. Good what question. What am I doing next? <laughs> um, I think... Uh, sort of little like iridescent uh, plates of spectral turtle shells, like those little uh, pentagon designs that make up the back of a turtle, begin hovering around Bosric and around Clovis. Um, and they sort of move like uh, around the body, uh, jolting around, and our little turtle shell fragments are moving in unison. Great. Awesome. I love it. Okay, so uh, any bonus actions? Um, no, but I am going to back up now. All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, that will bring us right. to Quedon and his spiritual weapon. <sighs> okay. Um, so here's, here's how this is going to happen. I... <laughs> tell, me. tell me how it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, first, um, like, before I even have a chance to react, y'all are going to see my spiritual weapon 
uh come down uh remind me what remind me what the, we're flavoring that as uh for um, it is a glaive Zarakis. with a yeah. star-shaped blade of course yeah so we see That's that so cool. <laughs> we see that swing down like before i even have a chance to react at anything and as that happens i'm going to yelp uh like you hear me almost go N and just instinctively i'm going to back up a couple of feet move myself over to here and as i go N i reach out my hand and like again like whether or not i want to do this uh i am going like directly out from my hand uh being supported by this mist and darkness coming up from the ground itself i'm going to cast a uh, guiding bolt okay uh which one of those is happening first the guiding bolt or the weapon attack weapon attack sorry i just described okay. all of my actions at once we're doing no that's okay I, i'm here for yeah. it i just wanted yeah. to make sure i understood the order of actions yep <laughs> that's gonna be so i'll first make that attack with Spiritual weapon. Man, Asterisk VTuber really knocks it out of the park with this music. Like every time I just. Mm -hmm. This is one of the other things I always look forward to every week. It's like I get to listen to Asterisk music. This is so fun. This I, know, I, <laughs> I sent I sent him praises the other day. I was like, thank you, thank you. This is so cool. <laughs> That's well, he sent me the rest today. And it Yay. sounds so good. Yay! The horrors that await us. I have <laughs> everything except the final <laughs> boss fight music, so you can't fight that one yet. <laughs> That's an 18 on the spiritual weapon hit. I'm assuming that, that will does hit. It. Great. Then that damage is going to be 10 points. All as right. It flashes down. And yeah, I've like momentarily pained in expression. I go and just reach my hand out and. <laughs> You see, going to make that guiding bolt. Uh, what's this guy's life force looking like already? He's he's. Oh, he's. What have fine. we hit it with? What have? Yeah, you have yeah. hit it with the spiritual weapon so far. Oh, great. Okay, <laughs> that's so that's so cool and good. Um, I'm I'm gonna stick with it being a first level. Uh, for right now. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Is a 23. <laughs> That'll do it. Yep. <laughs> and damage is 20. All right. Wow. Yeah, All right. My... Uh, so <laughs> the power of trauma. As the spiritual weapon comes down, uh, it singes the fur on this creature's back a little bit, and it kind of just <laughs> uh, a sound between a human pain noise and a yelp. But as the uh, this black energy strikes it in the chest. Uh, it kind of... The noise goes from horrible screeching to very human. And for a split second, it, its eyes turn to you. And one of its eyes, you've seen wolf eyes before. One of its eyes is very wolf-like, but the other one is bright crystal blue. And one of them looks at you with predatory hunger. And the other one looks at you in abject terror. I, I like stink even lower into my standard slouch, and I just cover my ears, and I'm just like I'm I'm breathing real heavy, but that's yeah that's my turn right now. I think I'm gonna stay here. Side note, DMs, if you're gonna make horrible noises, do it with your chest, not your throat, and always have water nearby. We're gonna move on to Mez. <clears throat> All right, uh, so I will look at Mary, and. Uh... How dangerous do you want to be? I could not even hear what you said. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, it said, I hunger. Um, he'll say, I won't stop you. And I assume he's going to charge in to destroy this thing. All right. Um, it will... Let me make sure it can close. It can easily close that distance. Mm -hmm. Uh, please. I'm going to, I'm going to give, I'm giving roll, roll 20, a, a chance here. That'll hit. 
Oh, sweet. Okay, and so it's going to be... Two 17 damage. damage. So it's going to be 17, and then I need a... Um, it ran at least 20, so um, on the same turn, the target takes... Oh, actually, an extra 2d8. So it'll be 4d8 damage. Plus okay, five. so yeah, go ahead and roll the 2d8. All right. Where is that here? That's going to be a 6 and a 4, so that's 10. And then it needs to make it uh, strength DC 15. Or be knocked prone. Uh, with a natural 20, it will stay standing. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. <laughs> uh, so I'm very proud of uh, Mary right now. Errol. So I'm going to just kind of look and just put my hands forward a bit. And a... Uh, the smoke will start to billow close to the creature and jump up and try to, uh, a hand will form trying to um, grab its uh, throat. And so obviously I'm doing a chill touch. Chill touch, cool. And that's a 19. That'll hit. And let me roll damage. Is yours going to lean to Clovis during this fight and just be like, that's kind of fucked up, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's I um no, no, we said <laughs> that's psychic it's going to be if you recall we said it was going to be psychic mm -hmm. it's not necrotic so it'll mm -hmm. take nine uh nine uh psychic damage yep clarification question this thing has this thing tried to attack us on its turn right yes cool it oh this attack. thing is very much aggressive you. yeah cool cool no uh -huh. you, you're not attacking another innocent thing this thing is predatory and trying to kill you good to know and i will move down here to kind of yeah. don't mind the shift. another i slipped in there it doesn't mean anything and i'll end my turn on that <laughs> all right bosric i'm going to attack because that's all I <laughs> but first i'm going to move to flank all right Um, actually using a real dice. Um, you need to move five more feet uh, to the left to flank. Okay. You cannot flank with the spiritual weapon. It's not actually a thing. Baldur's Gate lied. Good to know. <laughs> okay. I didn't think you could, but I didn't know if I was in the right position. No, you're fine. Right. Um, so first attack is a 26. That'll do it. D8 plus five. Or 13 slashing damage, which I'm sure is going to be halved because lycanthropy nonsense. I will neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. <laughs> Second attack. All right. Um, damn these. Nope, not going to jinx it. These yeah, are about to say, careful. These are incidentally the dice from your wedding. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, but that would be a 27. That'll do it too. That time only uh, seven slashing. All right. Action surge. All right. Uh, where is my action surge marker? Here it is. Okay. So two more attacks. Okay. Uh, that is a seventeen. That will hit. Oh, good. Okay. That dice is decidedly less hot. I'm going to have to dig out another D8. Um, so that is only a six. All right. That'll hit. Okay. <laughs> you said a nine, a nine, which becomes a 17 hit. A 14 yeah. will hit. Yeah. The 14 plus. I mean, I hit. trust you. <laughs> We're digging out another D8. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, the D8's are just not doing it for me tonight. Maybe I should switch to two-handed. Um, although, I'd sacrifice AC to do it. That is another seven. Okay. 
And then I will bonus action second wind. Never let it be said or that in... fighters can't do things. It's not terribly impressive at, compared to other things, but they get by. <laughs> uh, which brings me up to 42. All right. Um, and I will, having now sliced at this thing a bunch, I will not, I will kind of roar back at it, not animalistically, but in that concentrated battle cry. No. All right. And I know I'm basically Kong staring up at Godzilla <laughs> from the, from the Kong for Godzilla, and you have no idea how much it pains me to be in that position, <laughs> but... Well, that will, there it is. that will bring us to the Lycan's turn. Uh, the Lycan has now entered a bloodied rage. Um, and it is going to move. Bosric, you will get an attack of opportunity. Um, all right. Um, uh, 14. That'll miss. Uh, and so it is going to go to the source of the most pain it has felt so far, which is Quedon. And it is going to... Does Rhino get an uh, attack of opportunity? It did not move out of Rhino's uh, threatened square. Uh, so, Quedon, this is going at you. Yeah. Uh, 16. Does that hit? Yes, does that hit? Yes. Okay. For 13 piercing damage. Okay. And I need you to make a strength save. As you feel jaws clamp around your chest. Uh, aye, aye. <laughs> That'll be a 15. All right. Um, as you feel its head twist you recognize that this wolf is trying to pull you to the ground and you set your feet against it and that meets it beats it you do not fall prone great and now it's going to slash out at you with its claws uh which i believe will miss 12 yeah oh yeah that'll miss all right God. Um, and then it is going to make one more claw attack because it is bloodied. Uh, that will hit for 14 slashing damage. 14, aye, aye. And that will be the end of its turn. Zir, you're up. Oh, oh boy. I shall get in there again. <laughs> And you have advantage on these attacks because it is now attacking recklessly. Ooh, how terrifying. <laughs> okay. Oh no. <laughs> and this is and sorry, this is a werewolf looking creature? Mm -hmm. A flakian? Okay. Yes. Okay. And when I did necrotic earlier, that was against the that was, that was against the, undead. The previous fight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I shall strike at it with my rapier. Okay. That is a 24 to hit. That will do it. Excellente. So that will be... Eight piercing plus seven sneak attack. So yep. 15. And then I will also go ahead and use Whales from the Grave again. Okay. And that is a... Oh, wait. Hold on. Hmm. I'm trying to figure... Let's see what you want the ruling to be on this. So the verbiage of Whales from the Grave is... Immediately after you deal damage, you can target a second creature... Um, you can see within 30 feet, and they take necrotic damage. You also deal this necrotic damage to the first creature. So does there have to be a second creature for me to use this, or can I just deal it to 
the target. Um, Does that make sense? So the way we're going to do it is I'm going to say that any creature you can see takes half sneak attack damage. So you you would ro just roll, uh, just take the sneak attack damage you rolled and have it, and you can either, because it says roll half the dice, round it up. Um, and then, yeah, so basically what I'm saying is yes, you can target the same creature with this. That's fine. It doesn't make sense that you would have to target something else. Where does it say half? For Wheels uh, from the Grave? Yeah. Oh. Target a second creature you can see within 30 feet, roll half the number of sneak attack die, round it up, and the second creature takes necrotic damage equal to the roll's total. Oh, okay. My I'm using D to Beyond, so it does all that math for me. <laughs> so <laughs> um so it is 2D, so I can deal the 2D6 of this guy, even though I'm not targeting a second creature. Correct. Okay. If yes. the, now if that that is only true if there is only one creature. If there are ever two creatures, you have to do it to someone else. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, cool. Okay. Excellent. Well, then it also takes six necrotic. All right. Uh this creature is looking rough. Uh, but it is not quite down yet. Haha. <laughs> rough. And we're gonna go to Clovis. Unless you have more you'd like to do. No, I think that's it. I All think right. I'll, I'll stand my ground now that I, I feel that it's it's getting there. And I want to yeah. say for Whales from the Grave, it just, it hears some kind of spooky, spooky, scary madness behind it. Mm -hmm. And it turns around and feels something hit it, but it's not sure what. Yeah. You um you swear that at the edge of your hearing, you hear hoofbeats. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's it. Clovis. Uh, so this thing is reckless attacking, right? Correct. So we all have advantage against it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> okay. In that case, um, I think having seen him get bitten, Clovis is going to, like, look over to Queden. You okay? I can take another hit. Beyond that... Well, beyond oh. that, we'll worry about that then. All right. Let's see if it can. Um, and I'm going to cast, since I'm already in melee range, uh, Word of Radiance. So uh, it needs to make a constitution saving throw. Okay. It's kind of good at those. I figured it probably would be. but uh, 21. Alas. Yeah, that's fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I try and call on some Stendar power, and it uh, does not does not get through. Okay. Um, and that's my turn. All right, Queden. Um, what is this thing? Is this thing a beast? Um, you don't know what this thing is. Uh, but cool, but for... if I can if I can speak to beasts, can I speak to it? <laughs> um, yes. Cool. Um, <laughs> now the second uh, this might be a little bit too metagamey. Uh, can I tell if, well, no, I, with the way that I have flavored this, Queden has no control. So he, bon I'm going to go ahead and bonus action, make the attack, um, with, okay. uh, with the, um, spiritual weapon. Alrighty. That's only a 10. That will miss. Cool. Um, remind me, does it get advantage from reckless attack? It does. Oh, God. So just roll what? again. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I have a cool role play thing I want to do. You can that's, forego advantage to do that's your cool a, role play. That, thing. No, that no, no. That's a seventeen. That'll hit. Yeah. I I I have I have multiple options. This is D and D. <laughs> This is then that will be eight points of damage. All right, Queden. How does your spiritual weapon slay this monster? God fucking damn it! <laughs> yeah, okay. okay, I'm so yeah. sorry. I opened my mouth. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. You no, that's so true. Okay. Oh fuck. Okay. Can I? 
For the can sake I... of roleplay purposes, we can say it was you. Well, here's what I want to do. Okay. Here's what I want to do. You told me that one of its eyes looks way too human. Mm-hmm. I'm going to turn to it. And I am going to look at it directly in the eyes. And I'm going to say, Do you see us? Do you see us? We are going to kill you. Save yourself. Get out of here. And then the spiritual weapon comes down mid sentence. And as it slices uh, and just like cleaves this thing directly down the middle with myself looking directly at it in the eyes, I just fall down to my knees and yell. Uh, All right. This... I like it. This guy's also fucked up. Um, <laughs> Zero Santa Clovis. <laughs> the... Yeah, everyone seems to kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the jaws clamp a little tighter on you, Queden. You don't take any more damage because you, you're just kind of in there as the hit falls and then a few seconds later they slacken and the head falls to the ground and just like the spore born before it starts to melt into slop on the ground and as it turns into skeletal matter you see the teeth and you've seen wolf skulls before the teeth at the front of its mouth are very canine. But towards the back, those are all two human molars. You see me just, I'm like, I'm, as soon as I saw that thing's head, head come off, I'm just like fully, like, I'm on the ground, I'm hunched over, I'm just punching the floor. God damn it! God damn it! Just like all of that high-spirited energy like like top like winning energy that he had coming out of that first combat is now just channeled into pure just not not my class but rage Osric will give him a minute or two to do this but as he's as he runs over to um as he runs over to Queen he'll put his hand on his shoulder all the while scanning for more things around we have to go we have to go I, I'm, yeah, I'm like still. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll get a good grip on you. So, like, I know well, we have to go. It's not safe. We have to go. You might need to pull me up. I will do so if I have to. I, yeah. I think Clovis will come over and help with that as well. Yeah, it, it like, I'm fo- like as you pull me up, I'm just like following that momentum. Like, I'm just. I I just keep going like even if no one's leading the pack just like as you pull me up I just continue moving in the way that you pulled me up like saying nothing is he able to move me All right. yeah I'm pointing at Quedon I'm yeah I, I'm like I'm walking towards wherever we want to walk towards I'm just saying nothing I'm I'm leading the pack like that's where are we headed one more time? That's uh, you're headed the, um, the south failed. to the I'm chapel. Going to, yeah. I'm going to also, if I may, make a per, would it be perception yeah. for further threat? Perception. But I'm not even going to make you roll. You can hear at the Arch. edge of your hearing so many more howls. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Come on! Yeah. Come on. I, made, I think I it's made, running time. I made my movement. Yeah. Um, but you also, if anybody, what what was your perception roll? Seven. Okay. They had, they don't appear to be Little. getting closer. You can hear them, but it seems like something is stopping them. Yeah, I'm just... I charged ahead. You guys can clump but in whatever order. Yeah. I, I'll try and keep pace behind Queden and keep him pointed in the generally correct direction. I'm just, like, lurching forwards, <laughs> yeah. I'll mount. I'll mount and uh, get on uh, in the saddle on Mary. Okay, Mary will trot to uh, keep pace so she doesn't like overtake them. 
Um, I think Zir would take up the back if they, if they let her. She's relatively perceptive, so I think she'll continue to try to uh, see if right now it seems like they're not getting any closer, but she's going to continue to monitor that because she has run away from stuff many a times. All right. Um, and Boz will be next to her because he still has the silver ammunition loaded. Sure. You move uh, southward at a decent clip and you can hear the sounds of these creatures far away again as if something is keeping them back you hear the sounds of those the howls of the lichens that you fought when you first got here and you hear these kind of like strained howls um but nothing seems to get closer and after some time you arrive at the gates of a large stone cathedral How much time has passed about? Uh, it would have taken you probably about an hour to get here. Very good, thank you. And you are in the sort of snowy part to the north of this map. You're saying we need to drag new pieces? You don't need to. You just, okay. If you want to, that's where you are. Okay. Um, this chapel has a sort of large wooden building kind of built up next to it, sort of like a priory. Um, but you can see that the entrance is to the side. So Buildings this like this side. are supposed to be comforting. We, uh, do we know that it's safe or do we need to like clear it out? How are we approaching this building exactly? Well, the entry's over there. I can scout ahead and make sure it's empty. How are you uh, feeling? You were you took a few hits. Mary and I could trumpet around the side and draw. If anything's there, it'll draw draw it back off into the woods. Okay, uh, I'm fine. I'm good. Is Quedon still charging forward? I would say upon <laughs> was that would... is that an hour long adventure? <laughs> no. I For an hour, say... he's just like I think <laughs> I we gotta go. <laughs> I just like followed the momentum of the shove I was given to just lead the pack forward with my head down. I think upon like reaching the wall, I've just like put my forearm up on the wall and I just like have my head down. And I would probably be the last to enter. Um, but I'm like, I'm there. I'm just, yeah, I'm not still shambling around like a drunkard. <laughs> I'm just, I'm covering my head. Mm. So Mary and I will, uh, I'll just, uh, holding on to the saddle, just uh, let's check the perimeter. And we're just going to ride around the outside, seeing if there's anything we need to be concerned with. So yeah. as you and Mary walk, you get to the edge of the priory and you see the large uh, gates of this cathedral with uh, carved into the stone uh, the same symbol that you've seen on all of the uh, reliefs that the people are wearing, that uh, six-winged, six-armed angel. Mary stops. And you've gotten very good at sensing fear from people. But in all the time you've known Mary, you've never sensed it from her. Uh, I'll get down off of Mary, put my arm up on her, and uh, maybe you should go for right now. It is too much. We must be careful. You must be careful. Cannot go in. <laughs> cannot. Cannot. And then <laughs> Mary vanishes into smoke. I'll turn around, reapproach the group. It's the same symbol that was on everybody else. We can go in, but I would advise caution. Voice. Um, and I think Zir, you would have seen the rhino. 
vanish yeah. into smoke, but you probably are the only one. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll kind of go in ahead and scope it out a little bit stealthily if you want me to do a stealth check. Uh, yeah, go for it. Nat 20 for 27. All right. Um, you she's, fade. She's a little shadow. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely fade into the shadows. Um, these are old stone doors. It is impossible to open them without a sound, but somehow you do it. Cool. Um, <laughs> I just squeeze in there. I'm yeah. small. <laughs> and the inside of this cathedral is enormous. Um, you can see yeah. plenty of seating for the entire town, plus hundreds more. Um, you see a large sort of like raised Diaz at the back with another large, this one made out of like bronze. It looks like some kind of metal of the, the matron, which you assume, uh, the, the six armed, six winged entity. Um, and there's nothing else in here, but at the feet of this creature, of this statue. People have left gold. There's food, but the food looks like it's been left a while ago. You can kind of smell rot in the air. And the food has grown mushrooms. And you can sense something. Yeah, I don't love that. Um, you can sense there is a presence in this cathedral, but looking around, you see nothing. Um, I'll, cont- I'll go in further, but I'll kind of like put a hand back, like out near the door to like say like, oh, I think I hear something, like hold for a second, and I'll approach the statue. Okay. Um, the statue is probably about 20 feet tall. Uh, It's massive. Um, and you can see the same wings. Uh, it seems like the statue has been made with a slightly more, a closer hand to detail. And this, it looks welcoming and inviting in a very odd way. Um, and as you get closer, uh, that kind of feeling of the presence grows in your hearts a bit and you hear a voice from nowhere in particular say oh my it's been so long since i've had visitors who might you be um ah i am death of the four horsemen (laughs) <laughs> and um, uh, I bring this token of one of my fellow bringers of the apocalypse uh, in hopes that um, they might be returned to me, um, I think. And Zir kind of like darting a glance back at the doorway to make sure no one else is, has come in or peeked their head in. Uh, will take that folded up cloak that she took off of uh, Leif before they um, became a puddle. (laughs) Uh, And um, she'll kind of try to conceal it to where it's not super obvious what it is to just Mm -hmm. pass it in case like a Missouri or someone would see it. She's trying to fold it enough to where it just looks like an orange claw. Um, And she'll place it at the foot near the rest of the offerings. Um. You hear, <laughs> how quaint, one of the four horsemen. You're just a little thing, but then I suppose they say death walks under many faces. It is a pleasure to meet you, and I'm sorry for the loss of your fellow. I would be happy to help you if it is within my power. Thanks. Well, we can keep discussing this, I guess, at some point? Yes, of course. Okay, cool. Uh, 
Bye. <laughs> like, obviously has never interacted with like any kind of religious type situation ever. So she's like, cool, I'll pray on it, I guess. <laughs> and Wait, she's, where are you going? Uh, uh, I have to let my friends in. Oh, there's more of you. Wonderful. And you hear, as the doors to the chapel open. And all of you hear a very calming voice. Again, coming from nowhere in particular, say, It's quite all right. Your friend and I are having a lovely conversation. Please join us. Uh, <laughs> Zier turns <laughs> around like, uh? <laughs> Clovis will enter shield first. <laughs> Uh, I'll enter last. <laughs> okay. Uh, I suppose I'm second to last. <laughs> uh, now, there's going to be a moment where, like, the three of us look at each other and, like, wait, who's going in last? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I just like I, I, yeah, I look up for like the briefest moment of like confusion. Look at you guys and just scoff and yeah, charge in. And okay. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm. Just, I think I'm gonna take a seat at the at the uh, closest available bench. As I enter from behind my shield, Clovis will say, "Scruffy child, have you been maimed or murdered?" No, I mean, as in like right now or earlier. So, sorry, currently. Nope, I'm good. All right, that's enough for me. <clears throat> uh, I just yeah. walk in unafraid. This I, I, I would like to think something. that I would avoid that myself. I feel like I'm capable of that. <laughs> I've had devotees of every religion, but never a follower of the tortoise. Yeah, you're not very easy to find. I'm sorry, Missouri, you were saying. Oh, no, that's that's the end of that particular interaction. Oh, she okay. doesn't respond to it what depends says. On, I, I guess I guess Boz would eventually say, all right, fine, you can go in last, and I'll go in after after uh, <laughs> Queden. And once he's in, he will kind of hesitantly take a knee and keep his gaze kind of on the floor in... in Generic reverence because he he's not at all familiar with this faith. Anyone else doing anything as they enter? I'll enter, and as I come in, I'll just start moving around the uh, the outside perimeter, kind of sticking to the shadows as much as I can. Okay, I'm just I I've gone completely like. I'm not responding to anyone. I'm just muttering to myself. If this, if this thing wants to read me, they can read me. But I. My, my, my dear little death. Such wonderful friends you have. Walkers of faith. A noble warrior. And you. You're something brand new. All are welcome within the Temple of the Threefold Path. Oh, but I've forgotten my manners. Here I am speaking to you in a voice. But this is not how friends should greet one another. And, um, the door to the Priory opens and a woman walks out in long black robes. Um, her hands are gauntleted. Uh, gauntlets similar to what the two of you who saw the woman before saw. But the the head isn't hooded. The hood is down. Um, and you can see long, long, like almost platinum blonde hair. And a helm. Uh, that is open at the back for the hair, but it looks more like a mask. And the mask has three sets of eyes. 
and two long curling horns that go up from the forehead. And it completely obscures the face. And she walks out with her hands in her sleeves. There now. Isn't this better? Zero looks, Zero looks a little taken aback, and you can kind of see her. She's at, like, the altar, and she'll kind of step backwards from this lady because they look kind of similar, and it's freaking her out. Mm-hmm. I, I apologize, my dear. Um, and she reaches up and takes the mask off, and you see um, a woman's face, uh, an elvish woman. Um, and she has bandages across her eyes. And without looking at you, she says, Is that better? Um, it, it was it was fine. I just I don't know. We just had the same hair. It, it it's fine. However you want to be. She puts it's... the mask and kind of clips it to her belt. My name is Matron Lacrimora. Oh, you're like the thing. I am. Oh. Like the thing. (laughs) Well, this is easy. (laughs) Zero kind of walk closer to the rest of the group now. (laughs) Can I religion check this? Does this feel like a godly presence as Clovis would have experienced it? Uh, Yeah, give me a religion check. That is a 23. It feels exactly like when Stendar approached you in the pub. Okay. Uh, Clovis has shed his initial trepidation now that he has sort of vibe-checked this thing as similar to Stendar and is just marveling at the, the cathedral. Does it look nicer or less nice than his home church? Um, well, your church is, one, very well attended, and two, kind of a church of cities. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's more recent, probably more recently built, more recently uh, looked at. This looks like one of the churches you would have seen in Valorgard. This cathedral looks ancient. Mm -hmm. Okay. But does it look like it was good? Yes. It looks like it was at one time beautiful. Okay. Uh, Clovis is just kind of like uh, circling around, examining the pillars, the the stone uh, pews marveling at the architecture and just I could use a touch up by a stonemason but this is quite incredible well should the masters ever prevent me from leaving this place I will certainly look into one now I've met one of your lovely companions death I believe she called herself but who are the rest of you Oh, come now, don't be shy. I I'll promise pull I back my it. hood. Just, uh, Mesra. Mesura. I don't know what your language is, or if you're just placating. You could say it either way. I would like to say it the way you prefer it to be said. It is your name. Mesura. what are you a god of? I am a god of... Life. I was gifted immortality for services to my goddess. So you're a mortal, not a god? I was, long ago. Centuries now. Millennia, perhaps. I was one of the first priestesses of the goddess you call Lanyria. I did her a service, and she elevated me. And I am now a goddess of life. Bound to this place to keep it and its inhabitants safe. (laughs) Safe. (laughs) I cannot protect everyone at all times. I am bound to this place, as are you, and my powers are weak so far from home. Uh, Clovis is going to do a, uh, is he familiar with, uh, Lanyria's, like, practice and worship? Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, 
to to put it in context, Lanaria is the Zeus okay. of the Ravanian pantheon. She <laughs> is the mother of the gods. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, then he's going to do the you know the appropriate respectful gestures. He knows them. I don't. Um, mm. uh, and he's going to say, "Forgive us, lady. Uh, my friends and I are understandably rattled by." the outside world they mean no disrespect no apologies necessary i i know where i live mm. just imagine the horrors you would have undertaken were i not here all right well all due respect uh thank you very much for the aid that you were able to provide us and for taking care of others instead of the rest of the gods they don't seem to be here. I can't imagine they would have allowed this to happen. No, I imagine they would not have. And no, they are not. You are a student of religious studies, are you? And she kind of like, you can see her kind of tilt her head. Because again, you can't see her eyes, but she looks mm -hmm. like she's thinking. Uh, Clovis will pull a book out of his back. Like, I'm kind of a book guy. Um, but Clovis, uh, yes, that is your name. Yes. You didn't tell her that. In your studies, what do you know about the domains of dread? Um, <laughs> uh, not a common topic, but uh, what do I know about the domains of dread? Uh, roll a religion roll either religion or history and let's find out Ooh, hooray <laughs> which one because whether or not clovis at? knows and whether or not clovis can pull that knowledge out of his head after severe stress <laughs> may i also make that check Fair. you may oh, yes it was may, can we all just collectively make well as a cleric I, yeah. uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep this to quedan and clovis okay um, we have is it advantage? history or religion Uh, yeah, history or religion. They're both the same. I hope you roll good, because I rolled a 10. 18 plus 5 is a 23. Uh, yes. Two clerics, baby! All right. Um, so... Oh, boy studies. <laughs> uh, so, Quedon, yeah, you would have heard of Domains of Dread. They are pocket dimensions, similar to demiplanes. Um, where great evils that are considered too powerful to exist are pulled and placed um, to keep them separate from the mortal world. They are also separate from the from the influence of gods or devils or demons. That's what this place is? You don't know. She didn't say that that's what this was. She just asked if you knew about them. I, yeah, I think I'll just, yeah, still with my head down. She asked Clovis if he knew about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In that case, yeah, I will respond. I'll just say, I'll just say, of course. Clovis is digging through his bag of books that he keeps under the turtle shell on his back. I think somewhere in Petrus's treatise, he mentions domains. Quidin, did you say something? Um, to the, uh, did you say something, um, speaking, uh, to the matron, I'll say, are we in one? I'm afraid so. You are in <laughs> one of the six arms of the malevolent star, a rather unique domain of dread. Sorry, we're, this is, we're, we're in one. Yes. Pocket dimensions. A land what? absent of the gods. She waves her hand, and in her hand, a book of red tanned leather appears. On the front of the book, you can see a pair of wolves howling at a filigreed tree, and on the back, you see a drawn out star with circles around it. I'm sorry. Oh. The gods led us here. Why would they lead us somewhere where they put their enemies that are too powerful to deal with regularly? Oh. 
a moment, if you would. The rest of you still need to introduce yourselves. It was only polite when you're in one's home. I think I do need a moment. Well, we were told we have to fix it, right? Isn't that the answer? We're fixing something? Seems a little above our pay grade, no? Well, that one lady said we were special. I don't know about you guys, but after the uh, past couple days we've had, not feeling super special. You are alive, are you not? Debatable. Zir, like, checks Clovis's pulse. She's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you just like feel a gentle like little like hand on your I mean, wrist like believe, or on your neck. <laughs> I believe your speech. Okay. I believe what the turtleneck means <laughs> is what is a life if we're stuck here for the rest of it. Well, we're gonna fix it. That was the whole point. Someone one of your figureheads or whatever said that there was gunk and we had to clear it out, right? Yes, that is what Stendar told me, but why us? There are, like, people who do that, and maybe some of you are some of those people, but, like, I'm not. You are and... a unique collection of individuals. Two of you so hopeful and interested in knowledge. Two of you so reticent to anything beyond what you understand. And then the silent orc. Leaning against my door. Uh, apologies, I didn't want to interrupt her. Osric is my name, milady. Osric Cobb. And you, Scion of Zarakis. Whedon. The Nosk. Forgive my assumption, you wear the aura of death like a mantle. And I assumed you did not worship the Viper. No. Well then. To answer your question, all of your questions, and she um, walks forward, again, not looking at anyone, and she hands the book to Clovis. This book may be of some assistance to you, it is tied to this place in much the same way as we are. It was given to me by someone who came before. It will give you information when it believes you need it. So are the pages like blank? Because Clovis would immediately have begun. Um, if you open it to the middle, it looks blank. If you go to the front, there are words on the very front. Like uh, the first page, there are words. Oh. In what language? Um, in common. Oh, cool. What do they okay. say? <laughs> within the pages, within these pages are written the accounts of all domains within the malevolent star. May the information contained within offer solace to those trapped under its baleful gaze. Until the dread lords are slain, escape is forbidden, for your freedom may doom the world. May the gods have mercy on your soul. Signed, Brother Leandros Winterheart, last paladin of the Umbral Watch. Was that read out loud or? Yeah, that Clovis would what, have read it out loud. Yeah, that is what was read out loud, yes. Well, your gods may not be able to help us here. Clovis very slowly lets the book close. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're serious? Uh, yeah. I'm afraid so. And this... <laughs> but... All right. Um, so we have to take on these dread lords. Yes. 
Question. If you can. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, trying to follow. Domain of Dread, and there's six of them? The Malevolent Star is the domain you're in. You're in an arm an of arm the star. Of the star. And there's six of them. Correct. Like the symbol on Correct. the door? No, that's me. In my more divine aspect, I assumed you would rather see me in a mortal form. The mortal form I wore when I walked amongst them like you. Okay, Should you but... prefer, and she spreads her arms and there is a brilliant light and she floats into the air as four more arms grow out of her back and six wings. And in six voices, she says, is this what you wanted, little death? Not, no, well, I'm just saying that uh, it seems like quite the coincidence. Can everyone roll a there's... wisdom save for me? Sure. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> 16. <sighs> 17. Oh, I got a 12. That's magic. 12 as well. Um. Okay, I have advantage against certain. Hold on. It's not a charm effect. Okay. Wisdom save. Eighteen. Okay, all of you are frightened as the divine radiance <sighs> of this goddess washes over you with an 18. <laughs> Yeehaw. And then she shakes her head and... I mean, Boz is already drops, kneeling, so he just kind of... Drops back down um, and says, I apologize. <clears throat> and the fear after a few seconds of her returning to her mortal form fades. What reduced I... your divinity? This place... The four lords of the four citadels on our borders. And whatever brought them, and I assume you, here. And whatever is giving you the powers that may or may not have manifested in you yet. Okay, but you didn't answer my question. <laughs> Ask it again. So there are six arms that are domains of dread and you have six arms i am unrelated can i inside check that <laughs> yeah inside check it inside checking a god let's go i got a 13 <laughs> <laughs> seems unrelated okay so you don't know what brought you or us here? I know what brought me here. I came here of my own volition to try and protect those under my care, the villagers you see outside. As for the rest of you, I know only it is connected to the spores that fall like snow on my land. I know that all who come here have survived a great plague. I was able to contact some of you through your connections to the plague. You came here looking to restore something that was lost. It, it was you. It wasn't Zarakis or or any of them. The gods may have sent you on this quest, but it was because of my calling that they did so. Yes. Wow. What had the wolf on it? What had the... The book. Uh, the book. The book. The book had two wolves. Which Clovis is holding. Wolves. A wicked theme. Why? I did not create the book. The book was given to me by Brother Leandros Winterheart. He came with the second group. That was... Oh. 
time moves so strangely in this realm, but I imagine it was about 1,200 of your years ago. He seemed, for a moment, he was human. They, they seem sickeningly human. What, you must know something about the creatures that you claim to be protecting us from, that you are protecting us from. Yeah, we should insult a god in her home. This is going I, swimmingly, guys. I am, forgive me, uh, Madam uh, Matron, uh, <laughs> but you can understand why I might be a bit shaken up. Forgive my harsh words. As I said before, no forgiveness is required. Much is being asked of you. And little choice was given. How are we expected to defeat things that are worse than the uh, the evils that came before? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, I have to... You wait in line, Missouri. I... I can answer both questions. You're expected to defeat them because your strength is great, even if you don't see it yourself, and your time here will make you even stronger. I have been able to twist the curse that brings people into this place to turn it into strength. As to the creatures, they were champions like yourself, but weaker of spirit and heart. Some of them, the spores turned into the spore-born, the creatures you see that are still partially human, with growths coming out of their mouth. I'm assuming they begged you for death. Do not think of that as anything. They were no longer alive. They were, in fact, dead. But mushrooms have memory, you see. The last thing they remember is the last thing that was said. When these people begged for death before the spores took their body. As for the creatures very similar to your mortal lichens, I... I think they were the opposite. Those whose will was too strong. The spores turned them into beasts. I'm glad you've come here. I am loath to admit it, but my power is failing. 500 years ago, these creatures would have never come so close to my citadel, let alone into my town. 200 years ago, I would have never allowed newcomers to face a pack of lichens. Within five minutes of arriving in my domain, I... I become afraid. We arrived here... Yes, sent on a quest, but... No warning with people people back home are they're they're never seen again because of what we believe we were sent here to mend, and now we're here to what pur purge this realm now of its of its woes, and that would somehow help back home. If you can stop what's happening here, you can prevent it from happening ever again. What's happening here? The... Champions like yourselves have taken it upon themselves to serve the entity that rules this place. What is the danger that we will go down the same path? Why, why, what makes us any different? Hope, I suppose. Hope that my faith in you, Amelia's faith in you, is justified. So who is this? 
other deity then would we have only heard your name ha haven't we I know not I wish I did I would give you the information I could Brother Winterheart found it but the book will not open to me I can only give you the information contained within and the names of those champions who turned their back on my light I think they're what weakens me they carry, each of them, a pearl of perfect black. Should those four pearls be destroyed, perhaps the entity will make itself known. Hmm. I require nothing of you. If this is a task you do not feel yourselves up to, you are welcome to stay in the hamlet. You will be kept safe. For how long? You said your power is waning. For as long as I can protect you. Until more champions come. But it is not fair to ask you to do something you know nothing about, and I recognize that, which is why I will not. This is a choice you must make. Life isn't fair. You do what is right. Or try to. No, you do what's necessary. Necessary and right aren't always the same thing. You speak like a man who has... Committed atrocities. What burdens uh, your soul, Mazura? I think you need to have one of those first, and I'm not as religious as my fellow companions here. Oh, don't my don't let my religion fool you, Mazura. <laughs> and yet you're bored of Oh. Oh, my poor boy. You see it now? <laughs> no, I don't. I think I'm the poor boy. No, I don't see it. Such is talking to the matron. Such broken creatures. Yeah. Yeah, I think um uh, can we stay here for a little bit? Yes. This is a lot of information to process on top of some stuff that honestly we should probably also discuss. Um that's happened in the, the last, last two days. The last I will say, you are welcome to stay in the priory. There are beds and food, and I will keep you safe. The last thing I will say. If you do this for me, I will give you what you ask. I will return. Your sisters, your family, uh, your lover. Sis sisters, plural? <laughs> I will show you who you are, and I will protect your city. Now she said all of this without looking at any one of you. How do we know you can follow through with this promise? I'm afraid you'll have to have something you haven't had in a long time. Faith in something greater than yourself. I was going to say gullibility, but that sounds good too. She smiles. To be honest, I found them not to be far off. Trust is a fickle thing. I have offered myself to many, many such missions and been thrown to the curb time and time again. But what you say is true. I feel more powerful today than I ever have. 
despite being, well, you know. Thank you, matron, for the help that you can offer. As much as it is hard to trust anything here, I believe you are doing what you can. Should you wish to take this quest, once you have rested, I will provide each of you with a boon. It is all I can ask. It is the least I could do. Proof of my faith in you. Take your rest. And she turns and uh, walks to the statue and walks into the statue and vanishes as if she were a ghost. Yeah, that tracks. Went about as well as it could have. What was that? Oh. We... We five clearly don't know each other as much as some of us may want to, but the matron seemed to know us all. Or plays a good game. They sensed knowledge of Secrets that I had hoped to take to the grave. So. Um. <laughs> Maybe rest, and then... Maybe rest. Let's discuss. I, uh... promise I'm a I'm a, I'm I'm a good guy I'm I I promise <laughs> I I I'm I it never seems to come off that way does it <laughs> and I just like start laughing to myself and yeah look out look in the direction of of uh, of the beds probably not the best presentation of that information I I'm not very good at presenting any information. <laughs> Wait, and you've done nothing to display yourself as a bad person. If anything, no. you've shown a lot of remorse for things that were trying to kill us, so that usually is a sign of a very good person. Maybe a little eccentric. Well, I think that goes for all of us. Forgive me. My, well, I have been abused, tormented, followed, just for the research I have done in the name of my path and my deity my entire life has been those surrounding me misunderstanding my intentions. And, well, showing remorse to a creature that was very close to clearly killing a number of you, whether or not that is a good thing is debatable to I. But thank you, Zir. Oh, 
uh, in the Priory, you guys can see, uh, you can see it on the map. It's very well lit. Uh, there is a table in the middle with uh, some food set, um, and there are beds for each of you. It is one large room, so you won't be able to sequester yourself quite as much, but there's enough space that, you know, you're not going to be right on top of each other either. So uh, you guys can long rest. Um, and uh, just so everyone knows how I do the economy of long rests, anything that happens during a long rest can happen before the long rest. Uh, that will not eat into your time unless you have an eight-hour role play, which we don't have time for. So... <laughs> Uh, role play happens in real time. Rests happen at the speed they go. So, uh, if anybody would like to do anything with the rest, yeah, I don't know how tired I am. I don't know. At the same time, though, I don't know how interested I am in like engaging fully in a conversation. If anyone has any questions for me, though, I'm leaving myself pretty open. <laughs> I'm just like yeah. <laughs> like this I'm, is I'm this not... is uh this is role play time so this is when you guys can engage with each other for a bit <laughs> So when last we left our wonderful heroes they were in the chapel of the threefold path having just met a blind goddess and I realized I didn't describe her well enough um when she became her horrible ethereal form there were eyes on her wings um so that's important uh and there were also eyes on the palms of her hands as is shown on the reliefs so the goddess has left and the party is left to their own devices so heroes what would you like to do uh, I think Clovis goes into the priory, tries to get himself set up for his meditation, but the weight of everything that has just been sort of thrust upon him and, and the group at large is too much for him to get into it. Um, and so anyone else who, who makes their way in would see Clovis, like, sit down, try and do his breathing, and just eyes open. Missouri. I would still be uh, so. I assume that the main area we were in was a darker environment. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be uh, walking around now that the entity's gone. I would probably be walking around out there, looking at, you know, just architecture, seeing if there's any books, any kind of writing, things of that nature. Just now that I can actually look around. I was um, also going to look for books, so that's perfect. Zier's Zier's hoping to try to figure out. If it's called the threefold path, what are the three? <laughs> so yeah. if what there's are any, the folded paths? Yeah, what are the folds? So she's looking mm -hmm. for any kind of writing or scripture that would explain that. Okay, so um, Clovis, you would find um, Zir and Missouri kind of looking for books, though you will not find any. Uh, Clovis has cast uh, the light cantrip on his shield to just be a big bright spotlight just like looking through the shadows like you're not you're not slinking away this time uh until finally he finds you hi can we have a talk can you turn out the light sure just tap it and dismiss it and when, and, and when, when you came up to it or... when you come up to me and you have this bright light emanating from the shield i will be and i'll um... squint who is we? Does that include yeah. me? Am I part of that? Yeah, this uh, is a big like echoey area. Everything you just said was totally hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And this is an everyone thing. I just <sighs> team bonding. This... Well, bonding might be a strong word. Let me get what I have to say out first. Oh, this, okay. <laughs> this is so much. This is so much tons of terrible stuff going on. And I think I've made pretty clear on my respect what kind of person I am and the fact that I don't really deal with this kind of stuff ever. And by and large, we've all had, you know, our separate reactions and some of us have had separate levels of preparedness for something as crazy as this situation. 
Mizora, you're the only person who seems to be just kind of fine with all of this, and I haven't really been sure what to make of that. And also, not a detective, but haven't been able to help but notice that everyone else here who seems to know what's happening and, you know, how this all works seems to know about you and, you know, what you are and what kind of things you do and a lot of sort of background stuff. And you seem to be sort of wrapped up in all of this. If we're supposed to be a team out there, and I'm saying if, because I haven't made up my mind on all of this, I need to know what's happening. I second that. Um, Very well. Let me start at the beginning. <laughs> we met in the graveyard. I met four people and followed a wolf. And I will gesture. I will uh, gesture at uh, Queden. And then we all went off. We are here. You are scared. Maybe I've dealt with some things scarier. Maybe I've seen things that are scarier. But at the end of the day, I'm a tactician. I look at what happens. I'm a fixer. And if I let fear rule me, then I can't fix the problem. Your inability to control your fears in the moment when it needs to be shored is something I've honed, I've worked on over time. Question, how old do your characters look? Uh, Clovis, he has a weird mix of like, looking old because of stress, but appearing young because he never goes outside or does anything. <laughs> so there's like no physical wear on his body. Um, also probably like, and also, yeah, he's a half elf. So you would, uh, Missouri seems knowledgeable enough to know those sorts of things about half elves. So I'm assuming yeah. you would, you'd guess he's like twenties, thirties. Okay. Uh, Quaden. Uh, I mean, yeah, it it like similarly ambiguous. Like, I would say, up like appears young on like very close inspection, but very much gives off the impression that he is older in experience and just hauntedness. So, like, <laughs> like sunken eyes, like definitely like wrinkles in places that shouldn't be on a person that is as young as he is. But like visible acne, like yeah. Okay, um, I'll be fair. So my character is definitely uh, looks late thirties, um, in terms of his body and how it works. Um, he definitely looks older from wear and tear. So I'll, you guys are young. You maybe you haven't seen as much. Um, I'll motion to Queden. Maybe you haven't been exposed enough to the world, and all you can speak for yourself. And I said not maybe. For me. I said maybe, but well, if you're going to sit here and be... question me, then you be prepared for the answer. Oh, Don't right. ask a oh, question. Right. I haven't right. started oh, questioning right. anybody. It's Clovis that started questioning. That's the second time in the last hour that you have specifically targeted me. I don't like the way that you look at me. Then why are you here if he's speaking to me? Oh, he said he's it was not the of... only one that's curious about the things that you're so mystical and mysterious about yourself. So as to your second question, Clovis, and I completely dismiss Queden, um, how do they know so much about me? Well, that's very interesting because I don't know much about me. So when they say something, when they think something, when they voice a concern, uh, fact or an opinion, I dismiss it out of hand because I cannot verify their information. I'm going to jump into this real quick. Queden, yeah. roll me a wisdom save really fast. Oh. Uh, I'll say, like, I, 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 I took a stance like against Missouri. I like that's yeah, that's and now continue thing. your role play. This, that's, this that's, wisdom save may or may not yeah. matter. Okay. 
and, uh, and... I'll, I'll I won't say much. I'll say what you see. I won't say much about what he's feeling inside because that's a bit metagamey. Uh, I... I, I'm gonna say he like takes a step backwards, and if at all possible, and if Clovis lets him, just like, like it's gonna like take a a very quick, just short inhale exhale, look at Clovis with just some like knowing understanding like loose understanding that the two of us have and just move towards him so it's like a, a, appearing that the two of us are questioning him not like close close but just if i was if if clovis was here and like we were between missouri i have moved around to us both be facing him mm-hmm. got it and just message me what you roll on that wisdom okay. at Understood. the end of that statement uh to clovis i will then re-engage eye contact with queen and i'll be like and now your question. I'm figuring out how to how to DM. Hold on. <laughs> look, I <laughs> look, listen, I'm not trying to pull strings here, but you don't seem particularly confident in your sort of general morality and sort of goodness in the way that you interact with all of us and sort of treat us like we're children who need to be protected and kept pure. And I don't know what that means because everything out there is a terrifying monster. And if you choose to identify yourself more with them than with us, it doesn't matter if you're here to be our protector. I can't trust that. If we're going to go out there and I'm going to keep you alive and you're going to keep me alive and together we're going to keep everyone else alive and we're going to try and go do this big, crazy, ridiculous thing that the literal gods are asking of us, I need to know that I can trust you. And I want to trust all of you. Believe it or not, because I barely do, I kind of do want to go do this thing. I'm kind of a god guy. That's kind of my whole thing. So when a god asks me to go do something, I'm inclined to do it. That's why I'm here in the first place. But I need to know that I can trust you, and I need to know that you can trust yourself. And then, since you're a tactician, outside of that, I would like to know what you can do so I know what I can expect. Ooh, ooh, I can answer some of that. You can't. What? <laughs> so, Trust him? You um, can't. I why do you know anything about him, Zir? I've seen him around in some pretty seedy spots. Um, so I would say in general, I wouldn't trust either of us. <laughs> and she'll kind of point to herself as well. <laughs> ah, that's wonderful. Buzz, Buzz um, this is the best. cracks his knuckles and takes several deep breaths. I take another step towards Clovis. I'm not saying that in the sense of I'm going to backstab you in your sleep. I'm saying that in the sense of the reality. I, I think it's I think it's very noble and smart, because you're smart, Clovis, to want to be friends and trust each other when we're about to undertake something. But that might be a big ask. I'm asking it. Well, knowing us as long as you have, it is a big ask. Now, I'll answer your question very simply. Um, No, I don't align myself with them out there. I'm a good person. Otherwise, I wouldn't have charged in head first to help our friend over there when she was facing all of those things. I would not have done a second kindness of helping to ensure her when we were fighting outside of that. The people with the weird weapons. I sent my familiar, as it were, to assist you all. I am a good guy. However, sometimes you need somebody questionable in what they're willing to do. And sometimes you need a monster to fight a monster. When in those moments, I can become that monster. That does not make me less of a good guy. It just means that I'm willing to cross lines. You're not. And that's a good thing. Because there's going to be a day when you're, as you said, 
a God guy that in the pursuit of what they asked us, you are going to need something just as terrifying and just as malicious to get through something. And on that day, you're going to be very happy that I'm willing to blur the lines. That doesn't make me untrustworthy, though. She is right, big ask. And it doesn't make me not a good person. Does that answer your question? Yes. And let me make something clear to you, because I don't think it's been made clear, and I think it needs to be made clear. I understand the way that I have portrayed myself here, probably not cast me in a great light. That's fine. I am a coward. I will admit it. I've not done this before. I think I'll say it till the end of the world if I need to. If the gods ask me to do something, I do it. I am here. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand that viewpoint that you're the one who will be here to do the big, terrible thing when the gods ask us to do something that their pure, precious little priest can't accomplish. I want to make clear to you. When the gods ask me to do something, Missouri, I'm going to do it. And let me make something very clear to you. The gods asking was your assumption, not mine. I said when we need to do something, the gods won't be asking you. That is when your morality will be in check, not when you can hide behind the ask of a god or a deity. It is when it needs to be done and there is no greater power asking. That is when you need me. If the gods ask us to slaughter a town, I'm very confident you'll be able to fulfill the task because it was asked. But when it's not, that's when I have to step in because morality is something that is flexible to me. You would not have me hide behind my god. I don't understand why you seem to want me to hide behind you. What I never said to, to hide get... behind me. What I'm trying to get at is this. I don't trust you because you don't seem to be capable of trusting me. And if this is going to be a partnership, however many which ways this goes, I need to know that you can expect me to do my job. And right now, I don't believe that you do. I if agree. We're going to go out there together. I need to know that you think that I'm as strong as I am so that I can count on you doing your part instead of trying to pick up my slack. What you're trying to do is honorable, and I understand that. But let see, us do our part, too. See, there's a lot of assumptions I'm really enjoying. Bosrek, would you like to join us over here? We seem to be having a quorum, and I'll turn back. At what point did I say you guys couldn't take care of yourselves? At what point did I say you needed my protection? No. At times, my assistance, as I required assistance when we first got here after what I did. And Quedon, and I'm not looking at Quedon because I am engaged with Clovis, but I will motion my hand and Quedon's uh, came back and assisted me. You are making assumptions that you are not trusted. You are making assumptions that I think this and think that. The reason that you're getting any sense of ire from me is you could have walked up to me and said, Hey, let's talk. No, you brought a firing squad and said, here's what I want. And with that, my eyes will flare and some smoke will start to billow. You did not speak to me as a man. You did not speak to me as a party member. You did not speak to me as anything other than something beneath you to be chatteled and yelled at to be put on the spot because of your righteousness in your point of view. And in this entire conversation, the only point of view and opinion that has been expressed has been yours. And then you've gotten angry at me because of it. And, I, and I'm and i going to look over at Bosrek. I hate to that interrupt is this, pick. but yeah. this is important. I need a religion check from Clovis and Quedon. All righty. Uh, can, can I, should I wait to respond before I make this check? Yes, please. Cool. A 14. Okay. It's a 24. All right. Uh, Clovis, 
everything is fine. I mean, like you're taken aback by this and it's frightening, but I think at this point you've stood your ground enough that it's not going to immediately set you back. Queden. Oh, yes. You hear Zarakis's true voice in your head. It's not possible. The tyrant has no heirs. Queden, kill him. Missouri, I'm not making any demands of you. I want to know that we can work as a team. You didn't speak to me, though. You came I over did. and said, no. I approached you and I literally, the words that came out of my mouth were, can we talk? Yes. I said exactly what you are expecting me to have come to ask you as a man. And then immediately went into questioning and... Do I see Queden going like? Uh, hold, yeah, I, I, uh, so I need to. So, uh, <laughs> I need an insight. Sorry, check. out of out of character. I'm gonna actually insight check. No, the no, entire no, 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 no. Like I, okay. Like Queden hasn't done anything at this moment because out of character, I need to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do about that. Um, uh, uh, okay. Um, okay. Go ahead and roll the insight check, Bowser. Can we? But. I, I'm hoping it doesn't come to this, but can we make sure our tokens are where they should be just in case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like oh, we God. didn't axe ax pretty immediately well, on this. Sounds this like uh, I, may, I might potentially be out of the game. So let's. <laughs> no, you got. No, hey, if it's too violent, I, am I have a prepared. If so it happens, happens, it happens. I'm, I honestly I don't do care. I'm At this up. point, I'm oh, whoa, 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 watch your, watch your token there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, you know, because. It's important where everybody is because if oh, yeah. I see myself as flanked or anything of that nature, I mean, I told uh, you I'm I, right next to. I told you I'm right next to. Yeah, uh, I'm just, no. yeah. I was sort so, of. I I don't think I moved much except to maybe stand, oh. and I'm watching this whole thing. But I'm and it, it, I, I'd say it's it's I'm I'm definitely upset. It's not a hundred percent sure entirely what it's for, unless anyone cares to check on me. Uh, I called you over. In ca I did say, yeah. Buzzer, I didn't, we're having a quorum. Um, I'm, I, and I didn't actually move because I'm still like, what the yeah. hell is happening? <laughs> I'm Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, from the back of my cloak, I'm going to take out uh, that mace. And in one fluid motion, I'm just going to thrust downwards, uh, shooting the base of that downwards. And it's just hopefully going to make the loudest thud that I can make. Uh, in this, what is this floor? Marble? Mm -hmm. um, well, just stone, like gray stone. Yeah. Are you a? Are you? Do you look aggressive in my direction? I want attention, and I'm. I'm. I, I'm not happy with you. I'm making a very angle, angry facial expression. So, I just I want to clarify. So mm -hmm. you've pulled out your weapon and went like this. <laughs> And are staring at me. I have I have made a noise. I don't I I, I don't think it like. <laughs> yes, I have done that. I not with the intention of <laughs> violence, with the intention of called like, hello. It is my turn to speak. You guys have been yelling like. Oh, okay, but <laughs> it's very important. Are you it looking is. in an aggressive? stance and 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 veneer in my direction yeah yeah i man. will i will um need to disengage i will move back five feet um immediately at him going and staring at me um that smoke is going to start riding down my sensor and it will ignite um it's not billowing smoke yet, but it looks like it could be, and I'm starting to swing it going. Right, because now, I'm like, well, is he, is, 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 I'm like what do you do? And all I'm going to say is, what are you doing? And I'm swinging Once it there is the space side. between them, I will move between them. All right. There, I, am, I am between them, so I would also <laughs> assist Bosric in... No, I'm, like, I'm even going to grab you and push you back and say, no, you two. Okay, uh, you can push me back, but Clovis is going to try his best to step forward again. Because this is also, in his eyes, his job. 
because he we kind of started. All right, roll a contested strength yeah. check, Bosric and Clovis, and then Bosric, I'm going to let you finish your sentence. Oh my god, I'm trying so hard not to smile, you guys. Like that's why I keep like scratching my nose. What is like, No, no, don't. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> you you win. All right, yeah, Clovis, you. He is. This is a very strong half work. Oh and yeah, you I have know. a lot of like righteous anger right now, but he is just he has locked his arm. Clovis, You're not Clovis is not angry. He's trained too much at talking to people to like mm. let this get under his skin. He's not trying. What he's trying to do is just to do what Bosric is doing as well. So if Bosric pushes him out of the way, he's just going to do it from further away, <laughs> which is okay. hold his hand to either side and just be like, stop, like stop fighting. I one. Take deep breath, please. I wasn't the first one to brandish a weapon. <laughs> oh, you were. Uh, hold on, we have an out of character. Hi, did Lacamora say there was food? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is food? Where is it? It's in the Priory. Excellent. You see, as the chaos <laughs> erupts, Zir kind of like slinks off like a little roguishly <laughs> like I'm gonna go make food for everybody because we're probably gonna want to eat and have a more calm chat right. so so if anyone's I don't know if anyone's paying attention but if anyone is paying attention or catching I'm getting it, I'm gonna say that you're you are able to stealth out so Boz you were saying yeah no I you didn't run your weapon no you did not but words have been getting very heated and I, and you can actually see there is you can see the beginnings of tears welling in his eyes for some reason. It, just, just, this is a lot. I don't. I, we, I might have to leave this. I, can I? Can I make a check against myself? I like. I. I. I uh, <sighs> I don't know what miscommunication or whatnot, crossed messages, uh, you know, what happened, but what was supposed to be a talk, just, can we all just hold? Right now, we're all we've got. And I know that there's things, I don't know what they are, but there's clearly things going on between higher up and lower down and and this man in this corner and this man in this corner but please there are things out there that will rend us to pieces can we just calm down and he can, can i can, can he, i make a request he literally just like walks off throws a, a pew like up and then just and put and puts it back respectfully and just yeah make her make her request the room. i that that be some kind of persuasion like i because oh persuasion check uh i i don't know uh, because i have, cause I have a, actually i'm looking for uh, like that. i'm not looking for an out but i'll i'll say that like nine sweden has not been the like you, you know he is a god guy but like not as strong of a relationship with his deity as Clovis. But unless yeah, unless stopped, Boz is actively just walking off. Just just there's there's um, even the faintest hint of a sob in his in his voice as he's walking off. Have you I, calmed down at all, Queen? I you're gonna see me like. Missouri describe so your sensor is just you're like smoking? Uh no, it's no, it, it it's it's light. Like so it definitely was ignited with prestidigitation. Sure. But it's not yet billowing that smoke that mm -hmm. you would that, that you've seen come out of it before. But he is swinging it. Cool. If you are calmer at all, I would like you to roll an insight check. I am going to... And you can also deny that if you want. I'm, I'm going to look at... I'm going to look at Clovis. I'm going to look at Bosric. 
I'm going to... Like, there's a massive conflict going on between, as Clovis put it, like, following the words of his God and another huge need in his life. Friends, I'm going to, I'm going to take that opportunity and roll that insight check. All right. I, like, I, my, like... Please roll high. Sorry. That's a nine. Okay. Here's... All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Still angry. I'm going to sorry i'm going to um why this hasn't why? been tense yeah i'm going i'm go <laughs> thank you i'm going to say um real quick yeah what is that one again yeah, just are is everyone okay? Oh yeah, you know, my, fine. Okay. <laughs> my my heart my heart is pounding. I'm a little bit slower on reaction time because no, I'm I, just, like I'm checking am, in with players. My yeah, okay. my heart oh. my heart is pounding, but I'm okay. Yeah, I'm just I trust you all bit, to be able to separate gonna, character from player, but I still want to check. I'm in. just going to be a little bit slower on reaction time in figuring out. Uh, but I I have a game plan here. Okay, um, just check again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to say in in a lower voice as not the only god guy in this room I am tempted to side with Clovis not only because <laughs> well of his outward kindness and him being the only one who, and as I'm speaking, you're sort of like seeing me twitch a little bit, has shown me understanding and, and, and seemed to be upfront with what he wants. <laughs> you, you're the one who's been confronting. You're the one who's been calling out. You're the one who... What did, what did Zarakus call him? Red. Uh, Zarakus didn't call him anything. He mm -hmm. said the tyrant should have no sires. Mm. But the tyrant's not anything you've ever heard of before. Okay. I'm I'm gonna stick. With well, what actually, I'm doing, let me you know. Rolled really high on that religion check. The tyrant might be something you've heard of before. It's it's vague. It's something that you may have like seen mentioned just offhandedly in old books, but mm -hmm. it's not anything that really comes to the forefront of your mind. Is like something to be worried about. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do a thing, and. Then I I I I might make a request. It's going to be a bit meta Uh I'm I'm going to take. It'll be your call. I'm going to take that mace that I have brandished, uh, and I'm gonna start. You you see my eyes light up in intensity, and I'm going to. How far away am I here? Not very. You're ten feet away because oh, you took okay. a five foot step out of combat. I, um, I'm going to pick that weapon up, and I am going to start a charge. Uh, okay. I'm, 
I'm I'm just going to um yeah, I'm just gonna start a charge forwards. All right, because you and... are both in a combat stance, mm -hmm. I need you to both roll initiative now. Because okay. I need to see which one of you has the opportunity to react to this first. Um I am going to intersperse myself into this. So do you want me to roll initiative as well? Yes. Okay. I rolled but a nat you, 20. Good you... luck. I rolled a nine. I rolled a 14. Okay. Uh, so Clovis, you have you are surprised. So for the first round of combat, you you can't react. Uh, so with the nat 20, uh, Queen, you charge. See, my my intent. If I if I can charge, and at the like at the very last minute, like I I just I I want to I I want I, I, yeah. I want to <laughs> yell and start a charge, and if you'll let me, trip over myself and fail. If I can take an auto fail. I like or or <laughs> because I I think that there is a huge conflict in his brain. I think he is going to attempt the thing that his God wants him to do. But I don't think he wants to escalate this further. I think he does want everybody to be friends as unrealistic as that is. I I, I think whether on per whether on whether on purpose or accidentally i i i i think he's going however missouri wants to respond to this is how missouri is going to respond to this but i i'm going to attempt to pull away if you want so to... i i have a way that this works you're not okay. going to trip over yourself but i have a way that this I, works okay yeah, i was about to say if you're coming towards me and you're like this and you go mm -hmm. ah, and you start falling mm -hmm. um then Missouri is just going to go just kind of he would just kind of put his hand on you and kind of just push you back up. He doesn't actually want to fight you guys. Yeah. It's um, just there is a weapon brandished. He's not going to let you fall on your face if he can help it. <laughs> so what happens is you go you are ready to swing mm -hmm. and you hear another voice in your head that sounds very similar to the voice that you heard before but it's calmer and it says what are you doing stop and for just a moment you're shaken out of your head and that causes you to overstep you trip over your feet and Missouri catches you and pushes you back up and okay. you realize something now the first voice you heard was not Zarakis. you don't know what it was but it was someone trying to convince you that it was him Can I, uh, Clovis? I'll, I'm gonna ask you this. If it's something, can I, can I grab your arm? Are you like you're gonna push me back up, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna grab at your arm, and I'm going okay. to hoist myself back up. Wait. Also, uh, Bosriki so would have seen this too. Missouri is, is pushing you back up, so I can't do anything yet. So Missouri is the one that grabbed you. So Missouri is pushing my arm you back or his up. arm. Mm -hmm. I, oh. as you push me back up, I like you. You you made that one shove. I'm as quick as I can. I would say like, it's not yeah. a shove. It's mm -hmm. literally him bearing sure. your weight and, yeah. and kind of. So it's and not just, where he's going. Yeah, I'm just gonna like if I, I would probably fall into Clovis and just and yeah and just like take him by the arm in, in, in refuge. And so uh, I will say, as he pushes you back up, all he's going to say, he's not angry or anything. He's just like, mind your step. <laughs> Dark things are afoot in this hall. Missouri? <laughs> yeah. I am going to do thing, something that is... Well, we seem to be going wishy-washy about this. I'm going to be upfront with you. I was a voice, some voice. I got very angry. You, you were saying 
you, you were you were saying conflicting things at, at a voice told me to strike i pulled away a voice told me to kill i thought it was i thought it was arrakis but it wasn't i and i i'm just going to back like i yeah i like take my movement and I, i'm just going to back all the way up like i yeah i was like Are holding you... on to you and i'm you were I... holding on to me mm -hmm. i was i was holding gonna... on to your arm and i'm just i like i i let go for a moment and i just like i i keep my arm outstretched in your direction but i'm just backing up and backing up and backing up i'm not going to do it hard enough to like do a roll about it but Clovis would try to hold on to you and like keep you from shrinking out of this encounter. Okay. While you're doing that, in I'm that gonna case, can we walk back together? My sensor. If you feel my impulse okay. to move backwards, would you also do it? I don't think so. Okay. Um, in that case, um, feeling your resistance, I'm I'm gonna make the attempt to move backwards, and I'm just I'm I'm just gonna like take a step behind you while still like okay remaining close he uh, said he's not doing enough for a contested role so you're able to break free and take that step back yeah i i i would say i still have an arm on him i've just like shifted from like like mm -hmm. almost cowering with him to now just like probably an arm on his shoulder um, for sure <sighs> harsh words have been spoken then let us start sides. over. Please. Because I will explain something so that that way it's understood. You came to me at first and said, let's talk. You then made assumptions about me, your feelings about me, without asking about me before that. Then when I would respond to what you gave me to work with, you would get more riled up. And then I would respond to what you gave me back, and you would get more riled up. Maybe this time we just talk. If I may, Mazurra. <laughs> and I, as much as anyone, know how actions can be misconstrued. But Clovis was not the only one making assumptions. No, you're correct. All of my assumptions were based on his assumptions. It was a spiral pattern, but I had no choice but to be defensive because at first it was Clovis who said, let me talk to you. Then you came over and stood with Clovis. Then death came over and stood in a almost circular pattern around me. That is a situation in which I should be defensive and should act accordingly as I did. Because when I have three people all around me, what am I to assume other than they will act against me? You were I... a perceived threat. No, one man is not a perceived threat. Three Friends, are. please. I bow my if... head. You're right. Missouri, that was wrong, and that was not the way that I wanted that to go, and I apologize. I realized this was going to be a difficult conversation, and it is one that I had considered for a while, and ultimately, when we got those crazy asks from the deity lady, I decided this should happen here so that it doesn't happen on a battlefield when we need to be unified. That being said, didn't go about it the best way, and I apologize for that. My goal, though, for all of us, is that if ever in the future we are in a situation where one of us is surrounded by the three of us, we don't feel the need to protect ourselves. We feel surrounded by friends. And we're not there yet. I get it. You and Death were right. Trust, big ask. We're in a world of big asks now, it seems. Uh, and um, 
Clovis is going to reach down for something that if you hadn't been paying particular attention, you probably wouldn't have noticed because he's never drawn it before. But he also has a small mace hanging uh, from his side belt. And he's going to very, very conspicuous. He's going to hold his hand up and he's going to grab it by the head so it's non-threatening. And he's going to present the handle out to Missouri. Um, I will take it and I'll go and I'll just kind of. It's a good weapon. Thanks. I have no idea how to use it, which is why you never have seen me do so. I'm going to flip it around and Mm -hmm. hand it back to you and say, I think it's time you learned. It might be. I'm going to ask the big asks of of all of you, and that's going to be hard, but I'm offering you my trust first. All of you. Because it doesn't seem like we really have much of a choice but to do all of this together since we're stuck here anyway and i would like to i would like to feel good about it while we do it and i think based on how all of this has gone and the hurt that i have seen in everyone in this room that i'm not alone in wishing for that so let's make it happen They say the quickest way to bond with a new group is a common enemy. That we have clearly been pointed in the right direction towards. Let us not make that common enemy each other. Even if Clovis, or indeed Missouri, has to hold me back from my own actions. I apologize. I don't know what came over me for a second. <laughs> and so I, if if you'll let me, oh. I put a, my forehead onto Clovis's shoulder. Mm-hmm. So I'll say while you're going, bah, 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 I'm going to try to pull you out of it by saying, "What was the reason for my death? Why were you to kill me?" Uh, Red, remind me one more time. I apologize. The tyrant should have no sires. I just I, I even if that's not a direct response to the question, I just say that. Does that mean anything to you, Mizora? Uh, the Tyrant and his allies were against uh, the gods that you, some of you hold dear. Clovis, he'll mean something to you. A okay. long time ago. Um, do I remember the nature of him at all, um, DM, or uh, just that he's a tyrant? You know that he was at one time a god. Yeah. But his creation was wrong. He was created out of strife rather than created by the primordials. At one point in time, he was created um, as a god, no longer um, defeated, destroyed, I don't know. Um, But he was not born like the others created. And him and his allies, uh, save one, um, they fought against the others. So that would be the tyrant. I don't know much about him outside of uh, that due to I only had so much time to study. All right. I gave you my mace and I wouldn't take it back. We'll deal with that and what it might mean in the future. And, uh, did you say uh, you didn't take, did you take it back? I mean, yeah, you you handed okay. it back to me, so he took it, but he's speaking in sort of the metaphorical Okay, sense. I was like, okay. wait a second. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and uh, main... Quedon, he'll put a, a hand on your shoulder since you're leaning against him, uh, and he'll do the same offering that he did to Missouri to you. Quedon, you stopped yourself. That is what's important. Follow that feeling. I've got voices in my head, too. I think they're good. Maybe they're not. There's a lot going on right now, and I haven't had the time to interrogate whether or not the voice that's been leading me here is actually Stendar, and frankly, I would prefer not to. Um, The matron said that there were no godly voices in this realm. And yet our power... That is what they said. And yet, our power still works. Does it not? 
I've been out there casting spells. You've Act. kept multiple people in this group alive through your clerical magic. So something's working. The gods are here in some capacity. They might only be here because of us. Or creatures manifesting as them. <laughs> that's Maybe. the threat. That's the worry. Yes. Listen to yourself and not your gods. I don't have the burden of a god. And yes. at the risk of sounding cavalier, or, no, I'm doing is, just fine. Yes, this is a for, for, forgive the bluntness. This is a clerical matter. You, you, I, I, perhaps you are less of a burden than the two of us at the moment. <laughs> because... If you control your actions, then no. If you well, allow someone else to, yes. I do magic, Clovis. I use spells. I'm physically capable. I can summon certain beasts to assist me. For the record, you are terrifying. If I have to be. I prefer not to be when I don't need to. Fear is a useful tool when applied necessarily. Being scary all the time just makes the fear less scary. I would like to not have to use it when I'm walking around. It is good to know, then, that your standard aura is not, well, if we have learned one thing, and apologies for assumption, but you do not have to be a threat. And Hopefully, nor should we. As I said, as many of us, several of us have said, trust is hard, but understanding is maybe a start. Yeah. I won't act against you. I have no reason to. Like I no, said, I... I only do terrible things if it's a necessity. And that's I'll say when I this. Apply it. Yeah, I'll say this. Uh, Queen definitely like. He definitely wants to now talk to Clovis privately again. Uh, definitely wants to have conversations with a few people, but he's he's now a lot more tired than he was. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, at this point, all of you, I think Bosric, I think you've kind of watched from the distance, not sure how to engage here, but all four of you smell. Something really nice coming from the Priory. Uh, some smoked uh. meats and maybe some sweet rolls. And as you walk into the Priory, if you walk into the Priory, you would see that the central table has been set up with five places. Each one with a very nicely folded napkin. Um, and there's food in the middle uh, in easy reach of every space. And you notice that the table is circle, so everyone is equidistant from each other. And sitting in one of the chairs is Seer. You made all of this for all of us. My siblings and I used to fight. And, uh, well, I was kind of the leader of the group because I was the oldest and the best of us. Don't tell them I said that, but I was. Um, but we would fight sometimes. And uh, this would always help. So hopefully it helps. <laughs> and you can tell she's like trying to like be sincere, but she doesn't really know how to do that. <laughs> so she's just like, uh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry that I've been referring to you as scruffy child. That's not very nice. No, it's not. That's, that's, that one's on me. That's okay. What would you like me to call you? I've heard your real name. I've heard your alias. What do you prefer? 
Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Um, uh, you can just call me Zier. All right. Thank you, Zier. This but smells if, delectable, and I'm incredibly famished. If we go back, uh, which I hope we go back, um, don't tell people that that's my name, maybe? I'll keep it close. Okay. Well, let us break bread, as they say. Uh, did Bosric come in with us? What's up to Bosric? Uh, I suppose so. You don't have to. I mean, if you're still feeling sullen. No, he's he's that sullen isn't the word. <laughs> but okay. no, yeah, he'll he'll follow if if only to make sure that nothing else explodes. Mm -hmm. Uh as we sit down, then I, I think Clovis would would look over and probably gesture with like a a a bread stick or, or whatever he's got. <laughs> Thank you, Osric, for making sure that didn't go too sideways. It's a difficult job. But you're good at it. To keeping a level head. Sorry to put you in that spot. Uh, Carl, we can't hear you. It's been a rough month. And there is actually now a tear running down his face. So he... Thank you for showing strength, even in a rough month. Are we going to start to eat? If you'd like. No, yeah. I'm talking to the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. Boss, when he sits down if there's food, he is going to start eating because yeah. military, you know. Yeah, I, I like raise my yeah, I, I raise my food and as I as I say that that toast to a level head and I'm I'm starting chomping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just gonna be I'll be like this at the table, so I'm kind of elbows on just in this kind of capacity. Not really looking up and looking around. Um, mostly trying to avoid eye contact with everyone. Uh, if I if, if I can, like it, would it be weird? Uh, yeah. Can I assume that I'm sitting next to Clovis? Uh, I, if you want me to roll for this, I will uh, to attempt to whisper something to him without the rest being heard. Uh, without uh, that heard would be a stealth others. check. Yeah. Okay. You asked. Yep. Uh, thank God. I don't think I'm very good at it, but that was a decent roll. Uh, that was an 18. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Is anyone's passive perception higher than 18? Nope. Almost. Okay. Not that it matters. Yes. <laughs> and, you and are not, the and, deceiver. <laughs> and, and not that it was and, and not that it was anything that secret. I just want to say, well, we did learn some things. So while you're eating, uh, this food is delicious. Um, like, Zir did a good job, but there's more to it than that. So I'm going to give everyone 2d10 temporary hit points for the next 24 hours as oh, you get the yeah. effects of a hero's feast. Ooh. Radical. Nice. Ooh. Not the full effects, but at least Only that. Only six. 2d10. Oh hell yeah! And I'm gonna say you keep those until you get more temporary hit points, or lose them. Twelve. Yeah. All right. Sixteen. How do I just roll a die? In D and D Beyond or in Roll Twenty? Uh, sure. Yes. Uh, in Roll Twenty, on the left side of your screen, there should be a little like D twenty thing. In D and D oh. Beyond, there's dice okay. at the bottom left of your screen. I see. And it's how many? 2d10. All right. Let's see. Somewhere. Ah, uh, you got ten. six. Hooray. Six. Okay. Nice. Not bad. All right. Um, so yeah, you guys uh, eat this meal and you can do whatever else you'd like here in this room. Uh, you have... 
as long as you want to stay here. Uh, Clovis, the book, glows mm -hmm. a little bit warmer. The book that was given to you by the Matron. I'll hey. tell the combined group. Um, you may get, you guys may want to get some sleep. I'll keep watch. Sounds good. I will, uh, Clovis will go over to one of the beds and get into his meditation posture and doze off. Okay. Uh, just let me know when your trance ends. <laughs> Four hours? I'm yeah, still just sitting the, awake. Yeah, whatever that, the half of the long rest is. Yeah. I'm Zero. sitting awake reading my book. Zir would wait at the table until everyone has found their bed slash spot, and then she would go wherever the center of that is. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you guys want to do as part of your rest? Uh, I When I wake up, I do, which doesn't have to happen right now, I do want to have a, the conversation with uh, Lacrimora. Okay. I'm just going to get a general like consensus of what everyone wants to do. Mm -hmm. And if there's any group scenes, we'll do those first, and then we'll go back to you. So what I'll say is um, if Clovis gets up and says uh, says anything about wanting to talk to him, I'll just say to him, go ahead. I'll continue to keep watch. Anybody else looking to chat with anyone else in the group? Those two absent. I'm not absent. I'm in the yeah, room. Yeah, Missouri's still you're... there. Oh, you are you are in the room. Okay. Uh, right, 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 right. Um, not currently. Okay. I, I will, I will, when um, Clovis gets up, I will wake up Bosrek. Mm. Um, did you want to facilitate part of a watch? Sure. And I just go back to reading my book. Hmm. And I'll, during what, I mean, if, unless someone wants to talk to me, I'll spend the time kind of weapon maintenance. and just, But but would noticeably with a very kind of subdued, depressed air. Hmm. Uh, and Clovis wouldn't be making a big secret out of what he's doing. Like, he just casually strolls out, and he's, like, loud in the in the <laughs> chapel. So at, at any point, if other people join in. Okay. That's fine. Uh, well, it doesn't look like there's many more snippet conversations, so I'll just go ahead and go to you. So you um, you go to the large statue that Zir saw when she first walked in, and you do what I suppose you would do when you wanted to pray to Stendar. You just kind of sit, and then you hear her voice in your head. Was there something else you needed? Yes. I think you might be able to help me understand something. Well, if it is within my power, I would be happy to help. I sure hope it is. You're, well, as a god. I, there was some time when you were a god and weren't just, like, locked up in here, right? Yes. Did you happen to interact with or learn much about Stendar? Not much. I was sent far from Ravania, hmm. somewhere where my services would be required. Lanaria has life, and Juella has the Horde, so there wasn't much need for me. I see. Maybe not quite as helpful then as I was hoping, but still I would like to ask you. My deity in recent days is a god of civilization, of order, of the way that things are. And for as long as I've been in his service, which has been most of my life, that is how I've understood him. I'm, well, I'm, I'm assuming you heard all of our conversations. I'm a god guy. I'm also a book guy, traditionally. Um, and then at some point, for some 
reason I still don't fully understand, Stendar gave me this shield and bid me take up a mace and come here to do battle. And that's not something I had ever considered he would do. And especially not with me. That is something that I can help you with, actually. You, you are young. And you see Sindar in the face that he has presented to the modern world. Do you know what they call Stendar? Or what they used to call Stendar? I'm afraid I don't remember too much. I've read the the texts. I, I know sort of the general story, but that's not really what the church is focused on now. Of course. And... Of course. You know him as the Bastion. The bulwark. Yes. The wall is not who city. Stendar is. That's what I think I'm starting to realize. Stendar is the fortress. Stendar is a place where war is conducted. Stendar is the launching point for battle. When Stendar was born, he was thrust into a world at war. He had many to protect, and so he put them on his back. He was the largest of his brothers and sisters, so they built a city on his back complete with weapons to keep them safe and destroy their enemies. And Stendar bore them, all of them, remorseless. The city on his back was not always made of sandstone. It was once made of obsidian. Rough-hewn edges sharp enough to cut any who thought to climb his walls. And his shell was not always so pristine. All of your gods are war gods, Clovis. They were not born that way, but they rose to the occasion. You may not believe this, but the most terrible warrior in your pantheon is not a god of death, a war. No. The most terrible killer that your kind gives worship to is my matron, Lanaria. There was no more ferocious warrior. Is that what I'm meant to be, then? A, a follower of that Stendar? I don't see why else he put a weapon in my hand and gave me a shield. Stendar did not put a weapon in your hand. Stendar cares for you. He gave you something to protect. He sees something in the four that you've been sent here with that must be protected. I think you see something in you, Clovis, that you don't see in yourself. You are a god guy. You are a book guy. But I heard what you yelled out there on the field of battle. Break upon the wall. I don't, I don't even you know do where not, that came from. You do not seek danger. But you do rise to meet it if it comes to you. It is no surprise Stendhal finds favor with you. You protect those... You protect those maybe more able to fight than yourself because you know it to be right. You must keep people safe. You do not have to be a warrior to be a guardian. My young half-elf. Why doesn't he let me heal then? The other one gets to heal. I try it and it doesn't work. So I have to make people slow and put turtle shells on them. I just feel like I'm... I've been put into a situation that I'm not suited for and I don't feel like I have all the tools that I should have at my disposal and I'm trying to make it work. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just yelling, kind of yelling around you <laughs> and you're in the general vicinity. 
You're such a strange little fellow. You would Thanks, always I get that a lot. With. You don't need to apologize to me for feeling your mortal feelings. And what make you human, or half-elf, or whatever you are, all of you. You are mortal. And you are allowed to feel the things you feel. I do not think Stendar does not allow you to heal. I merely think that is a facet of his you have not unlocked yet. Stendar is a city, a moving city. You've lived in the city all your life, Clovis. Do you know every corner of every city you've ever been in? Surely no. you do not, because you live alongside the Horned One and Mazura. They travel in circles you could not possibly understand. No, I stay inside and read books. So Stendar has given you the gifts you need. Perhaps he has not given you healing because until now you have not needed it. Perhaps as your connection to him grows, even this far removed from him, you will find more gifts unlocked for yourself. I hope so. I'm sorry. I'm I've I'm conducting Stop myself like a child. Apologizing. You have nothing to be sorry for. None of you do. All due respect, my lady. In that essence, you are wrong. I don't have anything to apologize for. To you, maybe. But maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit. Well, certainly not. You are right. a chosen of Stendar. And that in itself is rare. Stendar is a creature of the city, of the whole. To select one champion is strange for him. You should see it as a great honor. You have a mirror anywhere around, my lady, or any suitably reflective surface. She just kind of giggles, and you realize, looking at her statue, that it is made entirely of polished brass, and you can see your reflection. But, uh, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's kind it's of stay diamond. And they say I'm the blind one. <laughs> Thank you, then, instead of saying sorry, for being kind. Would you mind if I used your visage for a little bit of self-care? By all means, Clovis. Thank you. Uh, and Clovis is going to hop up on top of the altar. Uh, oh, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your understanding. <clears throat> uh, and he's going to like, <clears throat> he's going to like power pose uh, to try and hype himself up at, in the like weirdly reflected image on, on this statue. Mm hmm. Clovis, give yourself some credit. You've made it this far. Clearly Stendar sent you here, and he's not stupid. You wouldn't follow a stupid god, would you? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. So, you're here for a reason. Those people need you. Don't let them down. And don't let yourself down, either. We've got this. Okay. Uh, and he's just going to walk back into the room. Okay. Uh, somebody's point, I will get, if through Boz's shift, if he notices that Missouri does not sleep, he's actually going to, you don't sleep. No. Is that healthy? <laughs> Most definitely not. I'm refreshed. Don't worry. When needed, I could be called upon. If you should. Did you want to go back to sleep? Uh, well, I'm. Is my watch almost? I think it is. I was just you. I thought you were going to go to sleep, but no. Just... I. <clears throat> you're a soldier. I assume soldiers like. Uh, responsibility, order, maintenance, and oversight, so I figured it would be good for your psyche to have a routine. Oh, much obliged, but I'm 
was also worried about you because again i thought you were you would be off to bed but you've been awake the whole time no right um me i will and my shift dress up and i'll go to bed and kind of a that's mildly troubling <laughs> never able to sleep that's wow <laughs> And I'll just Sounds go back painful. to reading. Uh, when Clovis comes back in, find any of everything you were looking for? Um, not really, but I think that's better. I was looking for uh, excuses to not do what I have to do. And I've still got to try it out in practice, but I think it's time to stop doing that. Figure out why I'm really here. That's a good call. Don't be the man you know. Become the man you're supposed to be. Change is good. I like the sound of that. Most people don't. There's hope for you. Apparently there is. And I'm just now finding it out. I understand your viewpoint that you expressed earlier about, you know, how faith can sort of lead people to coddle themselves. And that might not have been exactly what you were trying to express. I'm, I've got a lot going on in here, so my wording might not be great. But I hope that you know that for me, my faith is the source of my strength. And I promise not to let it become a burden. Don't make promises you can't keep. Make a promise to do your best. Promise to do my best, then. And I have faith I will succeed. Yep. And if that faith wavers, then you're going to have to dig inside yourself. Not all your strength comes from a god. You're right. Especially after we teach to use that mace. <laughs> I wouldn't have high hopes in that regard. I have... Um, characteristically noodly arms, I think they told me in grade school. Um, but we'll figure something out, I'm sure. I'll pull out one of my daggers and I'll flip it to, toward, to you. Oh no, I have no hand-eye coordination. Then that it probably will, it, would be a danger to you. Then if it clanged on the floor because you didn't catch it, I'd be like, <laughs> you might want to pick that up. But noodly arms, uh, a dagger may fare you well. In times when you need it. Uh, Clovis will scooch down to pick it up because he literally just bounced off of his chest when you yeah. when you toss it. There was it, not in the sense that he made no effort to get it. It's just there's no way that reaction wise he would have he would have been able to make that catch. Um, he picks it up, uh, points out a spot on the wall away from everyone. He's like, that's my shot. Throws it and just like hits the far corner. Yeah. Well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Roll a d20, add your dexterity modifier and your proficiency modifier. Okay. Um, We're going to see if it does that. Because a dagger is a simple weapon. It, it's not impossible to use, and you could get lucky. Okay, so plus... Okay. Uh, yeah, it clatters <laughs> to yeah. the far corner. Fair enough. Roll <laughs> well, well, well. well, the nine for everyone at home. <laughs> um, so at Bozrek going, huh, 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 do you are you waking up or are you just reacting but still asleep? No, I was, uh, I was I'm in that react mode, awake but not quite awake. Mm. Oh, sorry. At ease, Balzrek. I was, I was proving a point. You don't have the rank to tell me that, but all right. Everything's fine. Uh, eight, I'll go over and grab the dagger and bring back. Eight hours is a proper rest, and there are only four in, correct? Yes, we're we're in there. So right. uh, we'll work on it. We'll get your arms less noodly with the dagger, and eventually mm. you'll be swinging your mace like a champion. 
Hmm. I'd say I'll teach you how to use my weapon, but that would probably be a very bad idea. Oh, most certainly. (laughs) Well, at least you couldn't lose it. All right, Go ahead and well, get I'll, some... Yeah, I'll get out of your hair. He's so bald. So he's bald. So when you say, get out of your hair, he goes, why, thank you. I didn't want you to get lost amongst, amongst the abundance of locks flowing from my head. You, you what? Oh, I, I'm going to go to bed now. Enjoy the rest of your rest. You as well. All right. Does anyone else want to do anything during the rest? Me, 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 me. Is she walking around out there or is she still in the statue? She's still in the statue. Okay, then nothing. Okay. Uh then um as you are doing your watch, um you feel You know that they're not physical fingers, but you feel fingers on your shoulders, Mez. You need to be more careful. That could have been bad. And I need you intact. Is that in my head I'm hearing that? Uh, No, it sounds like a physical voice. It wasn't a situation I couldn't handle. Mm-hmm. Plus, how will I know what I can handle if I don't push my limits? Don't underestimate the clerics, Missouri. They serve powerful entities. I didn't. We all have a reserve of power. I was waiting for him or one of them to cast a powerful spell. They've used most of theirs. Did you not see the radiant light flying along that battlefield? Had they thrown anything of power, it would have been snuffed. I may not be brilliant, but I am resourceful. I'll be more resourceful when you tell me who you are. Well then, I look forward to our little talks. Enjoy your book, Mazura. And don't forget, your resources can be extracted at any time. And then the fingers fade from your shoulders. I just close the book. Lean against the wall. All right. The watch continues without incident, and everyone has the benefit of a full rest. At the proper time, I'll uh, go around. I want to make sure Bosrek obviously gets enough sleep. So the first person I'll I'll awaken is uh, Quaden. Uh, I I awake with a with a bit of a start. I would say I'm like clearly sweating. (laughs) Time to wake up. I just like I, I'm I'm still like we're we're good, but I'm still like I I just nod <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, I sit up. And I'll go ahead and Clo is is Clovis attempting to be asleep? He he's just slept through the rest of his uh Yeah, he just he saw someone else was taking watch yeah. and he was like, I need this news. <laughs> I need a I'll, noodle. I'll just I'll uh, yeah I'll, I'll I'll carry the 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 wake up chain along, and uh, I'll proceed to uh, yeah. Zir. Mm, mm. Zir. Mm. 
It's okay, Clovis. Is it time to go? It's it's oh. the morning. Time to go. Well, oh. still needs to be decided upon, but it is the morning. Oh, sorry, I was having a great dream about my favorite bakery. Your favorite bakery? Yes, you'll they have, have scones. Tell... Oh, you'll have to tell me more. Sure. <laughs> I I like a good baked good. It's called Luan's. It's oh. in the upper city. It's, it's nice. Very nice. Sierra, wake up. Yes. Yes. Awake. Present. <laughs> she like salutes at you. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just point towards Bosrek. I think he would appreciate that more. She'll salute at Bosrek. <laughs> he was still asleep, apparently. And uh, You were the first one up. It's oh. a thought that can. Was Bosrek the first one up? Because uh, I went I, to Queden first. So, um, yeah, I thought I thought they were letting Bosrick sleep. I think that Bosrick's routine. Oh, he would get up. Oh, requires sorry. him to get up at a certain time. And and oh, Mazura, sure. you can clarify this for me. Do you think that a soldier who has been soldiering most of their life would have a okay? This is how long I'm allowed to sleep, and then their body just wakes them up. Oh yes. Yeah. Then that's what happens. See, I I thought that, but I didn't want to assume. So thank you for giving me a first hand. I didn't want to assume the his uh, personality. Yeah, I just heard that someone said they were letting Bosrick sleep longest. So I, I I said because you woke mm -hmm. up, so right. I was letting yeah. you. Okay, but, but yeah, yeah, I, I still yeah, think he's, he's, up, he's, any, up, um, he's up. Yeah. So, and well, I, then I would just say the other salute at you. But, yeah, so <laughs> you do see her salute, and you would have heard my. He'd appreciate that more. Should we go speak with the entity and uh, make decisions? Sure, we could pay the lady a visit. Well, we certainly have a path, but one of four to choose from, it seems. Perhaps they can give me... We need intel. <laughs> Perhaps they can give us more in input on which it is wisest to go towards next. Hmm. Does anyone have a brush? Yes, actually. Oh, uh, of course you do. <laughs> yeah, Clovis pulls out a like very well packaged like hygiene kit. Oh wow! Uh, do you want a brush or comb? Ah, uh, brush. And you see, <laughs> see, I don't know if I fully described it, but Zier's hair is like down to like pat like her knees like she has very long curly hair so after the sleep and travel and battles she's got like mats and just nastiness <laughs> going on and so she's like uh, i don't think a comb would cut it <laughs> well unfortunately you might need to cut it some of some of it at least I no, go, uh... I don't think I will. <laughs> and Sierra will take the brush and just suffer through it mm. for a while. <laughs> uh, Clovis just kind of w watching, like, there are mats in there that are denser than my armor. Yeah. Maybe stand behind her if you're in danger. I might. I'm no, please tough. don't. No, please. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not actually, that would, it would defeat the whole purpose of the, yeah, I'm um <clears throat> anyway uh the, the statue you can i'm a leader i'm very strong <laughs> she'll like try to reaffirm like she's like this gaze like i'm strong i promise <laughs> like i'll wrestle me sometime i'm gonna okay. um uh, i'm gonna look when she says yeah no i'm strong i'm a leader i can i'm just gonna look at queden who's been healing the hell out of her and then look back at her and look at queden and go okay Oh. Ah, so what indeed. is is everybody on this quest or does anybody want off this ride? I think a minute. Seconded. After last night, I may need you guys to save me from myself. You know what's good when you're on a quest? Second quest. No problem. Two birds with one stone. They say that in the city. Oh. 
in the country <laughs> too, actually. Really? Yeah. I really should get out more. Mm. Take and miss. <laughs> I'll actually walk out into the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll move the plot forward so we're okay. not just here whipping at each <laughs> other for each other, yeah. 40 more minutes. I do Get appreciate ready that. For 30 you. more minutes of us uh -huh. just taking the piss I'm just sitting here like, other. how many quips do we have? Come on. The quip quagmire, the quip mire, if you will. I love us derailing your horror campaign with us just liking each other. Big, big <laughs> losers. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm taking a note of, of friendship. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. Trust. No, trust equals weakness, and I'm well aware of that. So trust is not equal out. weakness, but just like the force, everything in balance. The more quippy and fun you have, the worse the horror gets. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, the, I will point out the, the people who interacted with Mez over the course of the night in any capacity, you will notice his voice has actually softened a bit. He's not just like always like kind Aww. of like looming. He's just kind of Yeah, I'm just chill. Can everybody roll a perception check, actually? Everyone except Mez. Oh. Because it's about Mez. Oh, I rolled really well. Can well, I know? Then you, you, you can perceive well, yourself. You cannot look at your own neck. Twenty. Well, this is, this is a very odd die. It has an L and W 10, 28, 23 on it. Oh, you're going to have to tell me what that means. That's a 15. All right, that's a nat 20. Well done. <laughs> okay, Um. so I got a 15, a 24 from you, Clovis, a nat 20 from Bosric, and Zier, what did you get? And that 20 as well. All right. Uh, so, Queen, you're still a little bit shaken, and I guess you're not really paying attention to Missouri's neck. But I, the have, rest of I you... have been intentionally not looking at him, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. The rest of you actually would notice that there are marks, three marks, right here on Missouri's neck, as if three or four very, very hot pieces of metal were pressed against his neck on either side. They were not there yesterday. I think immediate concern, Clovis would just kind of like, in a small voice, not to like make it a big thing with the whole group, but just to Mazora, but did something happened last night while you were on watch. We all have our demons. Mine just reach out and touch people a little more. Huh. Uh, fair enough, I guess. If it, it does it do I have any that? pain or uh did I take any damage from it? Nope. In fact, as far as you know, it wasn't there. No, I I'm completely placating right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um how are you? Uh, good, good. I think I've gained some uh mental fortitude that I needed, which is nice. Um if that becomes a regular thing i'll see if there's anything i can do about it assuming it's something that needs doing about sadly i think don't think it's something that you can deal with but i'll i'll, I'll bear that burden as long as i can i see well if i Who knows i could wake up tomorrow and never have to deal with it again that's true Oh, if I... Missouri, i am happy to be at a place where i can find your crypticness Somewhat charming. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys are chatting and quipping... And... As he says that, I'm going to be like, oh, I wasn't even being cryptic. Like, tomorrow I may not have to deal with it. What? Uh... That, I think, is the best part. Oh. <laughs> so you guys okay. make your way out of the Priory into the chapel proper, and in one of the first rows you see the uh, the woman again with her helmet beside her on the pew uh, just kind of sitting there and without looking at you i hope all of you slept well i did well, actually very well. those of you that slept <laughs> good i i did I, thank you for asking well speaking of cryptic uh, good morning mate good morning matron at the uh for being cryptic it's not cryptic i didn't sleep oh well, was that a choice that you made, or...? <laughs> it's it's not a hard requirement for me. Hmm. Less cryptic. 
I don't sleep unless I want to. I am mildly concerned for your health, but you look fine to me. I already asked about that. He says it's fun. Seems well, useful, as far as I'm concerned. My goodness, yes, the things you could get done. Anyway, uh, Matron, we were hoping that you might be able to provide some guidance as to I, I believe you mentioned pearls or orbs yes. of some kind as as to which one of the four directions to head first or which ones to avoid, whichever is uh, at the front of your mind. Are we capable of handling any of them as we are today? Well, I did give you the book. The book will provide more guidance than I could, after all. Oh, that's right! I fished the book out. Brother Winterheart was able to confront them in at least a... It was very much like you, Clovis. A defender, not a warrior. Which is why he had the wherewithal to write this book. And a book guy, apparently. Um, and you see, uh, written, um, the four dukes, the Countess Seltradot, once a dragonborn of great power, now consumed by a lust for blood. She tried to make children for herself, but the blood was too strong. Baron Ezekiel Gretos, a cleric of Haragoki, he sought perfection of form and was left an abomination. Lisabeth Dalusir. She wanted to know everything. She wanted to consume her own fear. She became consumed by everyone else's. Dr. Gregory Folger, a master of metal and forging. He could create such works of machinery as had never been seen before until he replaced his beating heart with clockwork and static. Sounds like a fun bunch. Uh, Clovis would have narrated that. Mm -hmm. That last one reads potential treasure to me. Just mm -hmm. a thought. Bulger was the youngest. He was recent, but recent. I would say that he his youth makes him strong. Lisabeth or Madame Seltradot, they There are more what I think you could handle. Beware the abomination. Is anybody Is else intrigued by the abomination? Intrigued. Yeah, I'm kind of interested. Yeah, definitely intrigued. Where Don't does he want live? to get killed. Don't want to get killed. No, that's fair. Where does the abomination live? Does it say? It does won't. It but the abomination lives below the aquifer. He was a doctor once. Oh. I imagine he is a doctor still. Well, let's put that one on hold. As a god, as a god guy, uh, I, I trust the matron's word. Whichever of the two rings best to so, the rest of you. So, you'll be taking my quest, then. She stands. This I is mean, wonderful it's... news. 
it's either that or rot away in this unknown place forever. And I rather so, like my home. Let's, if I could uh, make it a suggestion, let's go after the one that was consumed by everyone's fears. Are we ready for something like that? Maybe that's the one of the two that sort of bloodlust brings, freaked me out a little bit more. The bloodlust one that sounds like you know promises of deduction, a vampire. Those are not easy to beat, but they are straightforward. But As you guys are talking, was... the heels she presses the heels of her hands together and turns them and opens and is holding a chest. Keep talking, but she's walking towards um, you with this chest. We do Clovis. have a fear guy. I was about to say, remember what I said before about sometimes it's good to have a monster to fight a monster? Yeah, this sounds right up your alley based on what you were explaining yesterday. Oh, it might be the perfect chance to, uh, well, as we said, trust is fickle. Perhaps we are providing ourselves with opportunities to prove oneself to each other more than we already have. She uh, puts the chest down on the ground and opens it. As I said, I do have boons for each of you to help you in this quest. Osric Cobb, you are a warrior of some strength, but your weapon will avail you little against the creatures that live here. For that, I offer you this. And she pulls out um, a katana, actually. And she says, Ooh. this was forged in the Dragon Isles by the adamant dragon himself. May it serve you well. She offers it to you very reverently. Before I put my hand out, I say one thing. I know what you will food. And... And there's part of me that, that really would love to say yes. My sister died too young, but she died fighting for every breath. She earned her place by the ancestors. Bolgraf and Atros both would agree. Don't take that from her. Let her rest. I'll fight this fight because it's the right thing to do and to protect them. But leave my sister be, please. He looks like she's about to say something and then just stops. And then she hands you the sword. So uh, this is a plus one longsword. Yay! Uh, and that does count as a magical weapon. Um, she says, for you... Death, I believe you called yourself. You seem to have a weapon that you care about a great deal. And I'm afraid I only have the one. But if I could borrow yours for a moment. Um, sure. Uh, she uh, pulls out uh, what looks like um, like a makeup. Um, what's the word for it? I don't know what it is, but like a little blush mound. And she puts two fingers in it, and there's this weird like red wax on her fingers. And she runs it down the length of your blade, and then she hands it back to you. I hope that you don't mind a little bit of fire. Oh. No, not at all. So your rapier now counts as a magic weapon. Cool. And deals an additional 1d4 fire damage. Oh, cool. <laughs> Um, compact. Thank you. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. I couldn't either. <laughs> also, Bodrick, I was like, uh... sorry, I forgot to say, because your weapon is masterwork, it does crit on a 19. Um, for the, uh, god guys, I have these. And, uh, she pulls out two, um, just simple jewels. Uh, one of them is a jet, and one of them is a sapphire. She hands the sapphire to Clovis and the jet to quite uh, to Quedon and says, I don't know if your gods would care about these, but 
Hopefully they'll help you channel their strength a little better while you are far from them. Thank you. Uh, these are plus one focuses. Which raise your spell attack and spell save DC by one each. In addition, they both contain a single level one spell slot that you can expend once per day. Hell As for yeah. you, this is so fantastic. Darkling, I'm afraid my offer to you is going to appear a bit more impermanent, but I think it's something you'll find useful in the end. And she hands you uh, what appears to be a potion bottle. And she says, drink this. And you will find your strength elevated to heights beyond what you expect. Um, I will lean into her and whisper, um, What's talking to me? An ancestor that you have forgotten. That the world has forgotten. This drought will give him strength, but it will be strength that you control, not him. Use it to protect them. Thank you. I will turn around to uh, Clovis, who asked the original question. Based on the answer I just got, I'm a sorcerer. Okay. Do you do you drink the potion she gave you? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna drink it. All right. Um, you feel yourself empowered by magical energy forever from now on. Even when you level up, you have one extra spell slot of whatever your warlock level is. So, like, if you have second level spells, you get an additional second level spell slot, so on and so forth. Okay. Probably don't um, recognize it right away. <laughs> I probably don't realize no. it yet. No, you just feel the the energy. Um, and as you guys are kind of talking and like looking at your items, you hear <laughs> Matron! Matron Lacrimora, please open the door. Uh, Clovis is gonna run to the door. Uh, the matron flips her fingers and the door runs open, and someone kind of falls in. It was God, someone that you saw right. in the tavern. What what is it, my boy? Matron, the sisters, the sisters Seltranat, they're in the village. How is that possible? Oh God. No, I've been too distracted. I... And then she looks to you. Help them! Of Help course. them, please! To war, then. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs>